Hello everyone, and it's time to explain. And this episode is like more than special. Like every episode is special, but this one is, is the best. Because we have like community managers from the past, from the present, and well, from the very past, I guess. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> and also we have like Lex, one of the most uh, impactful content creators we have uh, with, us, with us in the Brawl community. But let's go to the, let's go to the introductions. Ryan. Can you explain to us uh, who you are and what you do in Supercell nowadays? Yes, my name is Ryan. I'm super happy to be here with this uh, wonderful group. I'm the community lead at Supercell. Back in the old, old days, I was a community manager on Brawl Talk. I hope some of you still remember me. And, <laughs> they uh, do, they do. Good, and uh, <laughs> dearly miss it and glad to be back. And then we have Marcio that had just joined the team as well. Can you introduce yourself to the community? Of course, of course. Um, so yeah, I'm Marcio. Some of you already know me. I joined the um, Brawl team six months ago, more or less. And uh, I'm Danny's new partner partner on the... <laughs> apartment. <com> <laughs> apartment. <laughs> <laughs> on the <laughs> community team. And uh, yeah, like super glad to be here. A little bit nervous, but let's go. Let's <laughs> do it. And then we have Paula. Like maybe like uh, now Paula has like this uh, emotional charge with her because <laughs> of the last episode, right? Mm. But uh, I noticed you had to check your notes before introducing Paula. <laughs> <laughs> <That long. laughs> Louder or no? <laughs> so. Yeah, you already forgot about me. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Paula. Um, I'm the person who killed uh, Ryan and <laughs> replaced <laughs> Ryan in Brawl, and I, now I got killed by Marcio. <laughs> so <laughs> this is how it works in Brawl. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I was in Brawl for, for like uh, more than two years, almost three, I guess. And now I'm, I'm in Squad Busters, which is a new game. Uh, but that is not released yet, but it will be at some point. <laughs> so yeah, happy to be here. Uh, super exciting and missing the Brawl uh, team and the players as well. And last but not least, uh, I'll say it. The most creative content creator we have. Is that accurate? Where are they? <laughs> I don't know. Are they not? Yeah. You're, you're hyping me up way too much. It's there. the other guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, no, my name is Lex. I've been creating content on Brawl Stars since day one of the beta, uh, back when Ryan was st still being awesome. I mean, he's still being awesome, but <laughs> you know, more awesome back then because we could see him all the time. Um, also, Ryan, now that you have a different position in Supercell, does that mean you're Danny's boss now? Yes. Yeah, that's true. Not nice. only Danny's boss, but I guess yeah, their boss. Their boss. <laughs> boss. Everybody's yeah. boss. You guys yeah. are going to watch your P's and Q's here. Yeah, I told them before this started, if they did a bad job, they're all fired. <laughs> but nice. I can't fire nice. you, so you can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I usually do it anyway. <laughs> Amazing. So let's uh, get started. So for you, that like, well, maybe I, I also like, like to hear your opinion. And maybe yours too as, as well, Alex. Uh, what do you like about the bro community? Maybe we can start with you. Have something in mind? Yeah, I, man, the Brawl community is so amazing in so many ways. I've been a gamer my whole life, and I've honestly never seen a community that's so supportive, so engaged, so interested in the game, and so also understanding of everything that the the dev team is doing. Um, we've had tons of ups and downs, good updates, bad updates. Lex remembers through the beta, it was a, was a rough 18 months. But the community the whole time that I've seen has been really engaged, really interested, and also just understanding and supportive. Truly an amazing, amazing place. How about you, Paula? I, I don't know, how can I go after that? <laughs> <laughs> No, but uh, it's true. It's really, really amazing, and uh, you can you can easily like compare it to any other community out there. And, and they are so, they are so kind. They were so kind from the start. Like when I joined, and I, as as we said, I replaced Ryan, and it was a big shoes to to fill, right? And I and I had all this pressure that I put on myself. But then like when I when I actually was there and I got introduced, they were the kindest and like the most positive and like uh, welcoming so it's, it was it was really cool and i think we are really really lucky yeah it was the the same thing for me like i was right before we were like posting the announcements i was like super nervous i i didn't know what to expect but then actually people were super welcoming and i was just like so glad and i already knew a bit how the community mm. was and uh, it was just like happiness happiness like seeing all the nice comments all the fan art as well like thank you for that as well and uh, yeah, just super surprised. It was like a different world. Yeah. How about you, Lex? 
I think that one of the things that's always struck me as crazy about, or maybe not crazy, but awesome about the community is that, A, they're extremely passionate, sometimes for the good, sometimes not for the good. <laughs> sometimes too but much. <laughs> they're, they're always just like really passionate, as, as well as they're extremely knowledgeable about the game. Like I only, I'll see stuff on Reddit that I'm like, I didn't even know. I've been covering this game for almost six years, and I'm like, I didn't know. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. It's like they they rival Kairos's brawl nerdiness, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> so like their knowledge and their passion is pretty pretty awesome. Yeah, that was, uh, like following what you said about like uh, that you you didn't know like how they would react to your introduction, and I I, I have the feeling that the community is like so positive on like when when we announce like a new person in the team. That I wonder, like, if you can announce anything, <laughs> like, because in the, I, I said, like, uh, <laughs> yesterday I tweet that um, you. I think you ask a question like, "What is it like? Who is the best in Brawl Talk, and why is it me?" And then I said, like, "Ah, we are replacing uh, Ryan with a watermelon." And then everybody was like hyping the watermelon, like, "Yeah, watermelon, <laughs> the new community manager." Yeah, we should have brought it. Yeah. We forgot about Aww. the watermelon. <laughs> it's okay. Do we have a watermelon in the kitchen? No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the joke is happen. long gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, do you see like uh, if the brawl community is like different from the other games? Of course, like it's positive, but there is something like specific that you guys have seen that is very unique to the brawl community. Well, I think one of the things, and it's uh, also um, a popular topic right now, is the, the whole thing about the lore oh, and yeah. how they mm. care about the the characters' backstory and like who they are and why they do what they do. I think that's super cool because from the, I, I have the feeling from the from the Brawl um, team and our work, we didn't really, we never really gave them that much, but they created so many things mm-hmm. with so little information, so little like stuff that it's, it's very impressive. I've never seen that before. <laughs> yeah, I, I keep thinking that maybe we educated then in a wrong way because like <laughs> in the in, when we introduced the lore for the first time everything was like cryptic and mysterious right it's mm-hmm. so, like now even if we post like an announce a normal announcement of whatever they like <laughs> there must be a secret in this, this <laughs> image <laughs> somehow so yeah maybe maybe we've but I, I think it's good to have like this uh space that we when we are being cryptic and mysterious then we have the the room to to do it and actually like um because the people who are doing the, the lore, like the, our marketing team, uh, they were concerned, like, is this too hidden or is this too mysterious? And like on day one, they like mm-hmm. found everything. And like they, they, they I think there was, um, uh, what's, what's the name of the player? I think it's Ido or something. He's running a script to find oh every God. single possibility wow. of like frosty, force bruting the, the what is force? What Bruce is it? For- yeah. Bru- no. no, Bruce Forting. <laughs> yeah. Bruce, 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 Bruce Force, is that a superhero? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, professionals, we know what we're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> he's trying to find like every single possibility of codes mm. uh, out there, and it's uh, it's super impressive. So basically, like any challenge we can give to them, they will solve. I think it's really amazing, too, because yeah. in the beginning, we didn't think too much about, you know, the depth of the characters' backstories. Yeah. But then the players started coming up with backstories and deciding, you know, who Piper was in love with and all of these, like, yeah. intricate details about the characters' motivations and who they loved and all these kinds of things. And that inspired us to actually double down on the lore and figure it out so that mm. we could give back and build on that. Yeah, yeah. So, th- yeah so that's true. Out of the... All of the things you see in the lore is inspired or actually uh, following what the community has been saying. I don't know if like if we should like break already the positiveness because <laughs> like we I asked like what you like, what, what do you dislike about the Brawl community? Is there something that comes to your mind? Maybe someone has something to say. Oh man, that's Go a tough first. one. I miss them too much. <laughs> ah, come on, come like, on, that's a cop out. Yeah. No, that's true. It, I really, no, but it's true that I really miss because now I've been like kind of like hidden for some time because I'm not, I'm not out there because I'm, my work happens in the shadows at the moment, and I really miss that, like mm. you know, like being more exposed. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm still thinking about something maybe that I don't like. I yeah, you can continue and I'll keep. Do going. you have something like? Oh yeah, y'all, y'all. Be, I'll, I'll talk directly at them. Y'all be too toxic sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like I know that it comes from a place of you're passionate for the game and you care, but uh, sometimes it comes across a little bad. 
that's true. That's mm. true. I guess like th- it, there's a good thing and a bad thing where uh, the brawl community isn't patient, right? Mm. Mm. And I so uh, of course that can be difficult as a community manager, but also that's a huge strength because it means yeah. that when we want things to go crazy and yeah. viral and explode, they're there for it yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, and I think uh, yeah, I think like maybe the the toxicity, but like all. Also, like we just had like the brawl pass communication, mm-hmm. and like if if they just had read <laughs> the thing before commenting because they mm-hmm. saw the headlines, and of course, like it's very natural. Like I think every uh, I don't know piece of paper are actually going for the clickbaits and then for the crazy headlines because they want people to share those things without reading, and I think that's like a cultural problem anyway. But uh, yeah, like maybe be more informed because we are giving information, right? Yeah. It's like we, we are open to give all the information they're asking us. And then maybe before, like, I want to express me, my opinion on social media, like before I like, maybe inf- get informed a, bi- a little bit more. Because I think it's actually better for the, the person. Like, uh, because most of the comments I've seen, uh, of course, like changing the pass from uh, gem to IP is a nerf for the players who used to buy the, the brawl pass. But... Uh, they are making these comments of like, ah, my progression is being nerfed or anything. And then all the comments below it is like, just read the things. Like yeah. you are making mm-hmm. like a bit of a fool sometimes, right? So just be more informed. I think that's... A just read more. <laughs> <laughs> Very deep. I, I found something that I don't like. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. It took me a while. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but it's true. There is... Uh, I, I, I never like this kind of like... Uh, like almost like black market of accounts and like uh, how like yeah, I know yeah, this yeah. is a huge topic, but like uh, that people like uh, you know trying to sell accounts or mm. like uh, pushing for trophies. I feel like sometimes it, it seems that. Uh, the more trophies you have, the more popular you are in the community mm. or something. And, and some people feel so pressured um, uh, on that, that they are willing to pay someone to go into their accounts and yeah. for, for them to, you know, to gain, to get trophies fast. And then it's like, and, and I never understood that concept. It's like, mm. if you really want to have more trophies, you should play more yeah, the game and, and like, try, yeah. and don't yeah. get in trouble because of this, because then you're like, then both people are in trouble. Like yeah. the person who is pushing trophies and the person who who is um, given the account so it's like and then of course they want us to help them but it's like i really can't because the, yeah. this is what this this is uh, something no one should do mm-hmm, and it yeah. puts us in a very in a very difficult situation where like you really want to help but you you really can't because they did something that is not allowed yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah and this actually is a very good point because sometimes happen that like because of course like mistakes can happen and someone can maybe be unfriendly banned right of course, like it's a very minuscule percent, but it can happen. So, mm-hmm. like, if someone tell us, like, can you check this account because it was unfair? I don't know what happened. Then we go there and like we ask support to check it again, and then like we s- start seeing like all the information from the account, and then we ask for more information from the player, and then they say like, ah, oh, yeah, I share my account with this person. <laughs> like, why didn't you tell me this beforehand? Like, it yeah. <laughs> 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 it's very, it's very tricky. Yeah, it's yeah. really, really tricky because we all, of course, we wanna help, but like sometimes we just yeah. can't. And so, uh, yeah, actually, one of the questions like, do you miss the community? But you answered already. Do you wanna I did, explore yeah, more? I, yeah, yeah, I, I really, I really miss it, and and I'm sure we'll build something similar uh, at, uh, that is as good as in Brawl for Squad Busters, but. But now in no, bro, be better. <laughs> 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 I'm not gonna Brawl say I, I'm not taking sides here, okay? I'm yeah. being very n- neutral, so <laughs> please respect that. <laughs> no, but uh, but yeah, I I I really really miss that. But I I'm so excited to like to do stuff for for the new game. But of course, never forgetting uh, Brawl Stars, and I keep playing the game, I keep streaming the game, and I keep cosplaying characters, uh, Brawl Stars characters. So it, it will always be my passion so so yeah it's, it's always there some somehow how about for you ryan it's like now oh, you man. only do paperwork this boring bureaucracy <laughs> paperwork <laughs> meetings that's it i there i miss everything i miss so much i love being in brawl talks i loved um okay i'm gonna tell a little story here so everybody oh nice uh, so like when i like i said i gained my whole life and 
one of my favorite times of the year was E3, which is, if you don't know, is used to be the place where all of the AAA gaming companies would announce their new games, new updates, all these things. And I loved, of course, to hear the announcements, but I was in a way very jealous of uh, the people on stage who got mm. to say it. So I always watched this guy named Major Nelson who did this for Xbox, and I looked up to him a lot because it's such a cool moment to be on stage in front of thousands of millions of people, and you get to tell them the thing they all want to hear and everybody's happy everybody's mm. psyched up and excited it's like it's the best feeling in the world or so i imagined at 10 years <laughs> old, 13 years old and then of course getting to come to supercell and uh make that my career mm -hmm. was incredible and that's what we got to do for years and years and there's just nothing better yeah, unless you announce a bad update. <laughs> yeah, you just don't do that. Like I'm getting killed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I guess like you you were a Royale player before, right, Lex? I was, indeed. Yeah, and then do you miss something you, about the... Were you involved in the community back then? No, dude, like... Uh, so I made probably a hundred videos on Clash Royale, and nobody watched my videos back then because <laughs> I had just started, and there was a lot bigger creators. I was... It was going to take me a long time for me to get noticed, so nobody... I think my biggest video in Clash Royale was probably like 15,000 views or so, which is still pretty impressive, mm -hmm. but it's not, you know, anything crazy. Um, it, things didn't take off until Ryan invited me in to the creator program over here with Brawl, um, and that's what, you know, set things off for me, so... I don't really, I don't miss too much about Clash Royale. I actually still play it daily, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't miss anything about it. Yeah, Brawl's better. Period. Well, let let us know if you <laughs> ever answer. move to another game. Let us know how you feel. <laughs> how is the other? Okay. Yeah, but please don't go. <laughs> and um, I have a question for you all. M maybe for you, Lex, as well. Uh, uh, what? Okay. Who's your right. favorite content creator? Who? <laughs> Hard question uh, with no a content creator on the watching, line. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. Do you have one, Lex? Maybe it starts with you. Uh, well, okay. I actually don't. I watch very, very little Brawl Stars mm. on YouTube, mainly because a, I don't want to get influenced by anybody mm. else on what mm. kind of video ideas that I have, and b, YouTube keeps recommending me woodworking videos, so I just watch those. <laughs> uh, so I actually don't watch a bunch, but I would say that some of, some of my favorites are some of the tribe guys. Obviously, like Wasim, I think is extremely creative. Kairos, if I want to, you know, know every statistic under the sun. Uh, Ray, if I want, just want to chill. Ben, if I want to do some crazy things, or OJ as well. Uh, so probably he's one of the tribe guys, but I don't watch a ton of Brawl Stars YouTube. How about you, Paula? <laughs> For me, uh, I don't think I could name one person mm. at all, like because I. I just think about many. Oh, many, sure you could. No, I don't think so. I, I'm trying. I <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying, uh, but of course I have. I've, I think I have a bigger like space in my heart for the Spanish and Ooh. Latin American mm. community because mm -hmm. because language does these things, right? So uh, we we just understand each other better, and it's just just it's just easier. And and yeah, and, and always that I go to YouTube or I go to Twitch. Um, I usually watch more Spanish-speaking uh, content than, than English, so I feel more like connected to, to them. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have any 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 concrete names. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would say the same. Like uh, I'm trying to to come up with like a definite answer, but I don't know. There's things that I like about different creators. Like yeah. I like Lex's humor a lot. And uh, I don't know, I like how Kairos goes into details about everything. Like, uh, it feels like a really, mm -hmm. you know, like almost seeing a review of a game is like yeah. his videos for me are that kind of thing. And yeah, I, I watch a lot of Spanish ones as well because I used to Spanish, uh, to work to Spanish. <laughs> I used to work a lot with the uh, Spanish community. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I got to know a lot of them as well. So lots of times it's my go-to as well that is not English is the Spanish ones. Sometimes to go a little bit crazy, the Brazilian ones as yeah. well. But yeah, yeah, I would say that uh, it, it's really hard for me to choose one. Do you still watch Brawl content? Yeah, I mean, so I I can't pick one, and that's too hard. But like the the YouTubers that hold a special place in my heart are, of course, the ones that were there in the early days in yeah, beta. You yeah. know, Lex and Kairos, Corey, Ark, yeah. Ray. I think was there back in the day. 
Uh, it was such a special moment when the game was in beta, and I, I know you guys were struggling because it's very hard to get views when a game is in beta. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we were all in the same boat where we were betting everything that this game would go global. These guys betting careers on yeah. it, and of course us on the team mm-hmm. really wanting with all of our hearts to make it go. So it was such a journey, and, and uh, yeah, really good connections with all of those guys. Yeah, and I like the, the fact like all your answers is like depends on the topic or what you want to watch. Because, like, yeah, like, there is, like, um, this guy from Brazil, Lucas Clashon. Mm. He, like, makes those stories based on gameplay and, like, he's super creative. And, like, um, when he he was in the World Finals uh, in Paris last year. And, ah, actually, what a <laughs> coincidence. I have here, like, ah, some swag look at of that. the World Finals. What a coincidence. <laughs> yes. This <laughs> nice, episode nice. is sponsored by... <laughs> Brawl Stars World Finals. Yeah, it's <laughs> you had to read <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know if it was like championship or Which something. Which game do I yeah. work? For? Are you gonna use it? <laughs> it's yours. Uh, no, I wasn't asking for it, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like he, this uh, creator, he just said like, "Oh, I'm gonna make a video about like my trip to the World Finals, and then can you just say one line here?" And then I said like something really poorly or whatever. And then they, he makes like this one second, like the biggest and the most incredible video ever, right? <laughs> so it's, uh, and then like I go like for Vinho, for the Brazilian uh, news. And of course, like Kairos, I really love how he understands uh, development of uh, game development. It's like, um, it's, it's actually like, it, it's good because he always take both sides, but mm. uh, the general content creator or like the player they only see the player side right mm. so i think um, Kairos gets a lot of heat because he see the both sides of the the things but uh, a lot of respect as well i think yeah yeah, yeah. for sure yeah. and of course like lex for the creativity i think he he's like two-time brawly winner hey yeah and i have one twice now are you guys going to be doing a third one this year no uh, that's a, a question for that and i think uh, okay we'll get to that we'll get to that yeah. <laughs> and but yeah, like Crime Man, he's like a pro that's making mm-hmm. like more educational content. So there's a lot of like uh, really good content from, and I, I really like how they they kind of like, I don't know if like they are doing in a, um, uh, how to say, like organized way, but they structure themselves in niche, right? Mm. It's like you, you go mm-hmm. for likes for like crazy stuff or like more funny humor and then uh, you go to watching for like extremely crazy <laughs> videos or things like that. So it's really cool how they structure themselves and they find like how can I be different from another person. Now they have like the Michael who is going full in lore and like mm-hmm. uh, his videos that he talks about lore performs a lot better mm-hmm. than the, his other videos. So, like it, it's nice that he found like a niche. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, really cool. Really happy with the community and your work. There was a question here, um, like how how do you feel is working in Brawl? Because like uh, maybe like you 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 told your story like you saw like the Xbox announcement and everything, and then when you f- came to the came to Supercell, how did it feel? Like did you realize or did you was your a dream come true moment, or did you, did you see like oh maybe that's not what I uh, was expecting or no, yeah, I mean, it was it was an interesting... So I started on Boom Beach, actually, yeah. way back in the day. Um, and that was, of course, my eyes are full of stars being on a game that big. And I, I really loved it and loved the community there, too. And the lore of that game was also really fun and fun to play with as a community manager. Coming to Brawl was a really interesting road because, of course, as I said, went through the beta. And that was uh, the whole time. So we, of course, test our games internally before we release them to the yeah. public. So we tested Brawl at... Uh, uh, with the company um, maybe even a year before it went to beta. And we did a little tournament with inside the company to see, you know, just to try it out and see if it was fun, all that kind of stuff. And that was when I knew mm. this game's got it. I could tell even then it was rudimentary with broken characters and <laughs> no visuals and, and just some mechanics in it. Um, Brock was a robot at that time. <laughs> and, uh, but even then, I knew the game had it. And so, although there were lots of ups and downs and worrying about would this game go global, would it get killed, what were we going to do, I was still confident the whole way through because at the core of it, and, you know, Lex, you'll remember, we changed the meta how many times? Like, I don't <laughs> oh, know, three, four times. times. We went from vertical to landscape. We did all these things. But still, the core gameplay remained pretty close throughout because I think we knew that that had it in it the whole way. So 
we, I had the confidence in the game the whole time, and it was definitely a dream come true, even from the beginning when mm -hmm. I joined, when it was a very early. How is it for you, Marcio, that you just joined? It, w it was a dream come true, yeah. Like, um, it's an em a very emotional path because I've mm -hmm. been playing the game ever since it came out on mm -hmm. beta. And uh, like I was there when the there I, I was seeing the announcement and I was working for uh, player support at the time for Clash Royale and Clash of Clans and we kind of knew that there was something happening that mm -hmm. day, so as soon as it got announced and it went into the shops like I was like part of that group of going with the VPN like trying to find a, mm -hmm. a dirty way to download the game and <laughs> I managed. <laughs> and uh, don't I've been do this at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to ban you now. <laughs> we'll cut this in uh, in post edit. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, like I fell in love with the game. Like I was like playing every day, like to the point where I actually hurt my finger from <laughs> like <laughs> doing like this movement when it was like the drag, uh, right. the drag thing. Um, and uh, yeah, I loved the game. And after a bit, I started working in a, as a community manager for a Clash Royale in a local, uh, like in a local language for for Spanish. And then the the game got announced that it was gonna go live, and I was like asking my superiors, "Can I, please?" go to this game this is like <laughs> my <laughs> favorite game and uh, at the time like the need was for Clash Royale so I had to stay but I still managed to go to actually the release of the game I was there like supporting like the local languages as well it's like one of the moments that I'll remember forever and uh, yeah at that time I would never imagine that I, I would make it here so it feels like you know like the movie Creed or Rocky or something <laughs> like that that I spent all these years preparing myself yeah. for this moment. Yeah. And uh when earlier this year like I went through the process and uh like there was the option of uh, like going to uh, several games I was like no. What bro? <laughs> bro is number bro 1. Bro or nothing. <laughs> okay, get out. <laughs> <laughs> How so, about yeah. for you Paula? Uh yeah, it was for me. It was it was incredible. I cried <laughs> like the, the day they told me because cry on the beginning, cry at the end. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, I cried a lot. No, I actually don't cry that often, but yeah, I did. So so yeah, and actually it's funny because um, before coming to Supercell, I was already streaming the game. I was uh, uh, the cosplaying the characters as I said before, and uh, so for me this was like my hobby. It was my passion, and then I had my other job that I also liked, and it was also in the gaming industry mobile games uh but i was i was doing it out of like you know j just the passion of uh, i really like clash royale and, and brawl stars but brawl stars was like i was also there from from the beginning and uh, and it was it was uh, really cool and then when i uh, initially i this is a long story but i applied for clash royale for a role for for community manager and then through the process uh, at some point they asked me if i if i if if I would mind if from here I applied to mm. Brawl Stars instead of Clash Royale, because well, uh, there was another person, Max actually, yeah. who's, who's been there in Clash Royale. Uh, and then they, yeah, they, they hired him for Clash Royale. And then they, uh, suddenly I was interviewing with Ryan and with Frank. And I was like, oh, this <laughs> is so cool. Like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, like that moment. And, and when they told me that I got the job and, I was like, this is crazy. This is really crazy because I, I, I felt so lucky that, they, that, well, that you guys gave me the opportunity because I, I didn't have experience as a community manager. Mm. I did similar things and, 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 you know, I was in the community in different ways, but like, come on, this is Supercell. This is a mm. big company. Uh, this is uh, my favorite game. So it was, it was a lot. It was, it was just a lot. So I, I will never forget that, that feeling. Yeah, and it's actually because you were moving to a lead position, then I was being alone in Brawl. <laughs> and then, like, oh, we have, like, those two candidates. Like, what if Paula joins Brawl? <laughs> yeah. Yep. It, was, it was crazy. How about for you, Lex? How do you feel working in Brawl? Do you still have the fire in it? <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But, like, it's it's been a crazy journey, like, for us, for, like, me. And I remember, Ryan, like, when we would... uh um sit up well for me it was in the middle of the night like you remember like the content creators sitting there waiting for like an update to launch and we would it'd be like three four o'clock in the morning for me i'm like no i cannot go to bed until this <laughs> update launches and now it's just like yeah i'll schedule the video it's, it's, it's fine whatever <laughs> but uh no it's it was wild and like i remember I, okay so i remember when i was started covering brawl and I had been playing it for a while and making videos on it for a while. And I remember Ryan, or I didn't know it was Ryan. Well, I kind of knew it was Ryan. But mm -hmm. Brawl Stars on Twitter sent me a, or they followed me. 
And I remember thinking, okay, this was like going to be the thing that, you know, was going to be, they were going to message me and I was going to be able to become one of, you know, the official, you know, Supercell creators. And I remember I got that notification at like 2.30 in the morning, which is the start of the, you guys' work day. And I was so excited. I didn't even sleep that entire <laughs> night. dude. I was just like, I was like, okay, you followed me. Send me a message now. I was so excited, but Ryan didn't do anything for like a day or so. <laughs> he followed me, just, and I was waiting and waiting. Oh, but no, no it, it was it was good because um, like that moment, and it, it literally changed the entire course of not only me but my entire family's life, uh, and it changed it for the better indelibly. And it's it was it's, it's pretty amazing. That's really cool to hear. Yeah, actually, I do that a lot of like messaging someone and then i forget and then like <laughs> the person waits for a day <laughs> i think maybe i have done that with lex as well sorry it's not it's not it's just that they have so much on our table and then uh -huh. maybe we don't have You're, it's just you know it's a power play i had to leave lex on red yeah yeah <laughs> right. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just left me hanging yeah yeah um have you have you ever been recognized on the streets i have you have, have you? some funny stories have you, have you already, Marcio? No, not. not I don't think so. These things don't happen in Finland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Uh, well, have, yeah. Okay. I, I I said nothing. Maybe yeah. you can start. <laughs> yeah. Now I moved, but like because like the kids in my building, they 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 recognize me, and I think through TikTok because like he said, like, oh, are you on TikTok or something? So like, I guess they saw from there. <laughs> um, but then. Uh, like, of course, they are kids and they, they are Finnish kids, so they are shy. And then every time, like, I know, I'll, I'll go out to get a pizza from, from uh, that I order. Then they are, like, on the hall. And then they have, like, this awkward moment. They're like, oh, I'm, like, on my PJ, so, like, uh, dressed, like, really poorly. And then they don't say anything. And then there's just this silence that, oh, they know me and I know them. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I say, like, hi, and they don't respond back. And, oh, God. And because of that, you moved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now I moved. They, they don't know where I live. But, uh, but yeah. then uh, there are other cases that, like, friends of those kids, they start, to start putting, like, um, notes on my door asking for gems. Oh, my God. Because the first one I actually gave, <laughs> like, ah, oh, it's a cute thing. Let, let's just give something. But then it kept, keep happening. And then, like, okay. You're like Santa Claus now. Yeah, <laughs> not anymore because I don't live there. But, um, but, yeah, there's plenty of funny cases. Like, do you have any? I, I have two stories. Yeah. So the, the first time I got recognized was a few years ago. I was uh, in London for some kind of trip, I just in the back of a cab with my partner. Mm. And uh, we were just chatting in the back and the taxi driver in the middle of the, he was quiet the whole ride, but then in the middle of our ride, he, something like, <laughs> hey, do I know you from somewhere? And I was like, no, doubt it. I don't live here. I, <laughs> I'm not from here. And he's like, no, I definitely know you. And then we just kept talking for a while and he was like, you were the community manager for Boom Beach. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> that's correct. Uh, and then the second time, uh, which is probably my favorite, is actually when we went to G Star in mm. 2019 yeah, yeah. or so, and uh, we had a big Brawl Stars booth there. It was really cool. Tons of fans playing the game, running around, taking pictures, all these things. And I was standing next to Danny, just chatting about whatever we were chatting about. And a fan came up and was like really shy. And I think the culture there is not to go up and yeah. ask people for pictures and things, but very nervous and shy. I was like, can I, can I take a picture with you? And I was like, oh, of course. And then uh, he hands me the phone to take a picture of him and Danny. <laughs> <laughs> he had no idea who I was. <laughs> yeah, like from Korea, I also have like something really embarrassing. Cause like, uh, because like, I think the thing is that I, I I created like this persona intentionally in Brawl Stars because like I don't use a cap naturally. Like <gasps> you don't? That's, that's the only difference. Oh my now. god! This is the persona, is it? This no, but like the character, hat. like it's weird, like the hair and thing. Like, it's something that catches your attention, right? So then, like in Korea, where everybody's like different, like we are very different from then. And then we have like this weird guy walking around, so, like it's very noticeable. So I think that was the thing that maybe like if if they look at you for like one extra second. Like, oh, that's Ryan. I appreciate uh, you trying to make me feel better, <laughs> but no, I don't think that's what happened. <laughs> but, then, but then like, so because I was like a, a weird person in that event, like a lot of people were like uh, uh, asking for pictures and autographs and everything. And like going like, I, I couldn't do any route without like bumping someone to for that. And then I was like uh, getting used to that. Like, so whatever they hand me, I was like writing and 
blah blah until one person asks just for a one information. <laughs> so she was like, where is this in the map? And then I just signed her on that. <laughs> See, the fame got to your head. It got to your head now. Yeah, right. like, oh my God, I just want to die here. <laughs> That's my favorite story. You told me this before and I, yeah, I never forgot. <laughs> How about you, Lex? How is it uh, fame for you? Uh... I mean, A, I hardly never leave the studio. Mm -hmm. I go from home to studio. But I have been recognized, obviously, quite a few times. Some some, some of them are rather awkward, like mm. standing at the urinal in the bathroom and somebody's looking over at you and they're like, are you Lex? I'm like, bro, can we, can we just wait till this is done and we can have this conversation? But the, the, I re always remember the first time that I got recognized because I went into a coffee shop just to get some coffee. And there was a lady and she had her and her kid with her. The kid was probably 10 or so, it looked like. And he just kept, you know, looking at me and like awkwardly <laughs> staring at me. And and I I felt very awkward. And this was back when I had probably only like 100,000 subscribers mm. or so. And uh, anyways, and finally I was just like, I was like, hey, man, how's it going? He's like, are you Lex? <laughs> and, I, and for like for a moment there, I was like, oh, oh, it's happening. The dream's coming true. And I'm like, yeah. And he looks at me, he said, you look older in person. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, okay. And then he's like, do you know Chief Pat? <laughs> and, I'm like, and I didn't at the time. I wasn't even traveling. I'm like, no, nah, man, I don't. And he's like, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like so. I was very uninterested to him oh, because I didn't god. know Chief Pat, and I looked older in person. <laughs> Turbo boosted your ego to the bottom of the sea, yeah. dude. I, I felt so good for a moment. It didn't last very long. How about you, Paul? Do you have any good stories? Uh, I wish it be good, but I, the first time it was in Barcelona. Mm. I was uh, at a bar, bar waiting for my dad, so I was just having breakfast there. And suddenly, so there was another table, like yeah, pretty close to to mine. And and then I I see on the you know oh, the side of my my eyes, I see uh, a kid uh, with a phone like this and showing to his dad uh. something and then looking at me like trying to be you know the yeah. subtle but they were they were not subtle they, i could <laughs> see i was like <laughs> what's going on there and um, so at some point they the dad comes to my table with the phone <laughs> in his hands and he's like excuse me is this you it was a picture of me it was a terrible picture as well it was from a, it was a screenshot from a video so uh -huh. my my face was not great i was like yeah that that's me and then the kid came and then they asked for a picture but it was it was really very sweet and then i had the same kind of same setup like situation where someone coming with a phone uh, as well it was a parent with a kid and this was in a communion so i was in the communion with my with my, with my niece um and yeah, everyone was, you know, looking at the, at the thing happening there. And I was there at the back. And suddenly, like, I get, like, tapped on my shoulder. And, the and then I see my face, you know, you know like, is it you? I was like, yeah, that's, that's me. And then a picture. So that's, they always, I think they always uh, try to verify if, if it's actually, like, me first. Like, let me see. And then in another case, they were looking at my piercing, like, mm. oh, and the mom <laughs> like came the to me. I was eating a burger, and they uh, and she came. She was like, ah, because I couldn't see the piercing <laughs> in, the, in the picture. So I wasn't sure if it was you. So, so yeah. And then the other cases were, like, the kids don't really don't really want to bother you. Mm. And then I get messages on Instagram uh. um, that I randomly see maybe that, that day after, and they, they, they were like, uh, I think I saw you on this place, but uh -huh. I didn't want to, you know, t to mm -hmm. bother you and your family at that at that moment. So I didn't say anything. And this happened in a. I was I was uh, in the middle of the mountains in in Spain. Uh, it, it was uh, like a, a llama llama trip. So I was I was <laughs> with some llamas in a, in a farm. <laughs> so it was a very like I don't know. Very I wouldn't, specific. Yeah, I really wouldn't expect to find anyone there. Let me just get this story straight. You were in <laughs> the mountains with llamas. <laughs> yeah. Alone and it someone and then a llama recognized you. Right. And someone messaged you on Instagram and was like, "I see you." Yeah, kind of. Okay, that's strange. Yeah. But they didn't say anything. Thing. No, but I was with my family then, and then I got the message, and and I remember seeing the kid, but like I, I yeah, wouldn't know would they would recognize me. So, but yeah. how often do you go hang out with llamas? <laughs> I prefer not to answer. Okay, cool, cool, cool. cool. <laughs> yeah, but next, I, I I think like the 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 issue to me is that like we I guess like we 
we are not used to fame, right? Because it's a new thing and it's something that we even didn't even ask for because like we are... We oh, I definitely <laughs> asked for it, I for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that was Ryan's dream. He already yeah, told that. Story. That's what I said from the beginning. It's in our contract. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but then like uh, I feel like I need to give something or like to tell something to the person, like instead of like just replying hi or nice to meet you or whatever. So then like I end up in like lots of uh, weird cases or situations like probably the person listening to this story uh, will remember, but it's a, it's a mm -hmm. nice thing. Like you don't, don't worry. Like I don't think it's a weird or anything, but like um, there was one kid that like he saw me walking on the street and then we talked um, and then he, he went away. Like I think I, um, I think like he, I, he just asked if I, I was Danny then I said, yeah, I am. And then he said, hi, took a, took a picture. Then he left. And then like five minutes after he came back with uh, his brother and a bike. And then he asked like, can I visit the office? It was here in Finland. Mm. And then instead of like saying no, like a normal human being, <laughs> because like, no, it's like an office. Like it's, it's not like for visit or like, like not, a, uh, it's not open for, for visitors basically. I said, yes. <laughs> 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 and then like, then we made an appointment. Like uh, I got his email and then we, um, he came to the office like I, uh, I was like a bit busy on that day. So like I did a speed run <laughs> with him <laughs> and I felt like, oh, I didn't even like let him talk about anything. Like I was just like, this is blah, 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 this is blah. And then just running, rushing to the office. And then, then after like 30 minutes, the whole office was like toured. Then I said goodbye. And then he sent me an email afterwards like, ah, thank you so much for that. Like we, we, I gave like some uh, uh, gifts and everything. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we didn't even have had the time to thank you. So we would like you to invite you for lunch. Aww, <laughs> yeah, nice. and I think that's super sweet, but it's also yeah. a bit weird, right? Mm. Uh, so, uh, lunch yeah. or dinner. And then uh, I sent, uh, I was talking like uh, to my friends, like, should I accept? Because like, what if they want my kidney or something, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they might. <laughs> but then, then they say like, yeah, what the hell, like, ju just go. And then I accepted, but then like, oh, I'm, I, I hate myself so much for that because we booked a lunch and then uh, I forgot about it. Oh, yeah. no. And then after oh. I had lunch, like one hour after, I like, oh, no, I forgot about that. Now they're definitely going to want your kidneys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but then they reschedule and then they have a proper lunch. And then, yeah, they were super sweet. Like one of them uh, wants to be a, works with games. The other is younger, so he's still in school. So it was nice, but it, it is like a bit awkward to have like lunch with strangers that like, cause for them, maybe like they have a connection with you, but I don't have a connection with them, mm. right? Because I don't. I feel a little yeah. bad because like when we're doing stuff like this or brawl talks or whatever, that's the coolest we're gonna ever be. Mm. But when we're just like walking <laughs> home from the grocery store with bananas and milk, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. We know, <laughs> there's nothing. <laughs> Yeah, I always say, please, not now. Like, when I when I don't feel, you know, like myself or, like, I'm just normal or, like, mm. I haven't done my hair, I don't know, stuff. Like, I, I sometimes I think, please, not now. Like I don't mind, but I just feel bad that I don't have, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, cool... I can't announce any sneak peek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, do you want to hear about the new brother? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about, uh, how is it uh, in the World Finals, like, the, a lot of people stops to talk to you and you have like some funny or cool yeah the, the world finals was fun um it was it, it's such a big event like when you're watching it like from home but when you're there it's obviously a much different experience yeah. but it's there's not like an insane amount of people there uh so i definitely saw a lot of people that i knew of or they knew me but i had never actually met them and i think that was my favorite part is just actually getting to put a face to the name of some of these people that i had spoken with but never actually met but the, the world finals is pretty awesome looking forward to this year too it's gonna be a blast yeah it's except gonna it's probably gonna be very cold <laughs> yeah lots of <laughs> ice <be. laughs> but yeah i guess like those were the topics i had we can go through the questions that the community has asked us and i think lex has some Spicy oh, ones. I've got some questions oh, for yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> but before that, before that, let's okay. go through the sneak peek. And oh, sneak we have a sneak peek. Time, peek. Eh? Yeah. Oh. It's new. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you have anything? Like, if you have anything, any sneak peek? No. no okay. <laughs> Just asking. Like, if you have any squad, squad uh, uh, hot sneak peeks, then it would be nice to have. But we're yeah. still alive. 
<laughs> that's good. That's the status okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to know. So I will tell Lex like three three things, and then of course we'll mute myself for the viewers. But then Lex will pick one for us to go deeper. Okay. So we All have right. pressures uh, on me. Yeah. We have a. Uh, we have. And what do we have in the next update? Oh my god. Maybe maybe two items. <laughs> yeah, maybe two. Because <laughs> it was the Brawl Pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, true. Then it's two items. So uh, you tease me with three, but I only get to actually pick from two? Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. We can make up that's a okay. fake one. That's okay. Uh, yeah. That's a, that's a tough one. Um, are we still muted right now? Well, yeah, it will be in post, so yeah, we can mute as much. <laughs> okay, as <we> all right. <laughs> I mean, because I I want to uh, I want to hear about this at the same oh time. Oh my god, you still remember? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, of course it. And, and like people have been wanting forever as well. Mm. Um, oh, all right, all right. Hmm. All right. Uh, tell me about the uh, the five v five mode. All right. Let's do it. Uh, so, in the next update, we'll have a five v five game mode, and Woo! yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you're still experimenting. Finally. On like, yeah, on how we want it to play. Uh, like we're trying different modes. Like we're trying gen grab, raw ball, uh, wipe out. How it, they play out, and then maybe like the best one will actually uh, be released to the community. But we also like we don't want to let just like okay so it's a gen grab but now it's five players mm -hmm. or ten in this case we want also to have like some twist in each game mode like that will make sense to make it a five v five so yeah and then it will be like it will be more like an eventful thing so it won't be like in rotation but that's it five five is finally coming to the game woo hey, <laughs> that's crazy that's dope woo. it's exciting. I want to. I have so many questions, but I guess we'll just have to wait. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, do the pr hit the thing again. I like that. Oh, I love, that. <laughs> love that so much. Can you do that after I finish all my sentences? Yeah. <laughs> no, I can use this one. That's right. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Uh -huh. Ryan, how do you feel about having the catchphrase? Oh my god! That's I, right. I actually love it. I thought when people started make well, first of all, Danny was one of the first ones to make fun of me. Uh, really? Yeah. Oh, and yeah. this crew, everyone <laughs> in this room, was the first ones to make fun of me, because uh, I because I had a partner then, and I after every time you finished a sentence, I felt like I needed to mm. affirm it somehow, yeah, yeah. and that became my thing. <laughs> and then of course, everyone on social media picked it up after I did it eight thousand times in a row. <laughs> I I thought at first I was like. I was very embarrassed, and I, I, <laughs> I kind of it's like, shh, like, oh crap! I'm a terrible uh, community manager and 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 brawl talker and all this kind of stuff. But that now I love it. Now I think it's great. I wish I had a catchphrase like I'm trying for years. <laughs> <laughs> well, gotta, so that's that. There you go. <laughs> that's that's the one. <laughs> Just gotta happen naturally. Yeah, yeah. No, but that that's right. Is it's beautiful, and I think like the thing how it happened. It's because now I script Brawl Talk, mm -hmm. but Ryan, like, since he's a, uh, what's it, fluent, not fluent, but what is the... W great. Fluent. He's great. No, but <laughs> there is, like, when you are born in the country uh, that speaks native. that language. Native. 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 Native, yeah. I thought he was trying to compliment you, like, because he's no. so great <laughs> on <the> camera. <laughs> I was trying to have, like, his... <laughs> I would prefer that. Say more nice things. Yeah, <laughs> but, like, for a non-native, it is a bit hard to be on the fly, to have, like, a mm. clean sentence, right, that you, like, mm. can express something very... In a one liner that explains everything for me like a, I, as I'm explaining now for this one little information I'm using lots of words it's like uh, I script and then that's why we are fluent in brawl talk but like for natives it's easier so like naturally when I finish a sentence then like that's right because like you are linking mm -hmm. the things right so that was but you're freestyling this whole podcast <laughs> yeah but it's <laughs> like imagine like a brawl talk that i oh so there is this brawler and they, right. he liked the, the <laughs> <laughs> I <would imagine. laughs> and i think that's actually that. how it happened because it, there was some point in between where you had notes of what you wanted mm, yeah. to say but i was freestyling <laughs> and then when we connected them together mm. i kept saying that's right yeah after this. <laughs> <laughs> but 
idea. Yeah, it's amazing. So, like, should we start with the... Uh, how many questions do you have, Lex? 71. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've got, I've got, I've got a... I've got a full page and a half of questions here, so Woo! I mean, because we have you may nine. Not get to all mine. <laughs> okay, well, you only have nine questions. No, nine pages. That's easy. <laughs> oh, you have no, nine oh. pages of questions. No. Don't worry, we're gonna don't be worry. here all night. Uh, I can't wait. Yeah, it's <laughs> all good. So when we start with yours, Lex. Okay. <laughs> Are you sure you want to do this, Danny? Are you sure? <laughs> Maybe we can you do one start with from mine. Lex oh, and I'm, then I'm one now. ours and alternate. Hey. No worries, uh, Ryan. For these, you know, you're off the hot seat. You and Paul are free and clear. Good but point. Marcio yeah. and Dan. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Good point. Yeah, let, let's do it. Uh, well, it's it's not live anyway, so yeah, we always have to post it. No, you're <laughs> just gonna cut it out. Okay, <laughs> I get you. I see <laughs> how the censorship is working here, Danny. We're gonna cut you out right. entirely. Yeah. <laughs> <Right? laughs> You've never been here. <laughs> just uh, so, I've got a bunch of like tough questions, but I've also got some fun ones. So I'm gonna mix them up here. Let's go. Uh, this one's from Martio, actually. Martio, <laughs> now that you're working with the Brawl team, uh, give us something about Danny that people don't know. The more, more embarrassing, the better. Oh, I got you that. have total freedom <laughs> to do whatever, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Off top of my head, I'm not exactly sure. But, yeah, I guess like people get really confused why we don't, for example, speak Portuguese to each other. <laughs> Because we we are both Portuguese native Portuguese speakers, but we can only communicate in English for some reason. Yeah, that's not like specifically from Danny. Also, because I think like whenever there's something like embarrassing, you're the first one to tell it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. I, All I, right. I have something. Um, <laughs> Paula, <laughs> yeah. 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 thank you, Paul. <laughs> you're saving the day. <laughs> Um, he has a good and a bad side. Oh, and actually, uh, you guys can only see my good <laughs> no, side now. You, Ever. <laughs> you, need, you, need that you mean like physically or no, I mean, it's not that I... <laughs> 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 it's not that I think he has a bad and a good one, but he keeps saying it. <laughs> when these cameras go off, Danny is the meanest person in the office. <laughs> 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 like, let me cover the bruises. He keeps so saying wait, it. Which side... Which side yeah, is I'm good side? To... Which side is right. bad? Obviously, it's his left side. He thinks it's his good side, right? <laughs> no, you have. you guys have to... Can you? Uh, look, he's the again. only one saying it. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's yeah. why it's so That's funny. Kind of uh huh. And then, <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not seeing it. Yeah, but then, I think it's emotional. Yeah. It's more emotional <laughs> around your side of the face. <laughs> like it's a fact that people's faces are not symmetric, right? Therefore, there must be a good and a better and a worse side. <laughs> But then uh, even like the crew here, <laughs> they know that. <laughs> and like I always talk to the director, like, can you place me on my good side? And then he tries to do his best. <laughs> so how it, actually, the boxing scene, we changed the, <laughs> the <laughs> environment. <laughs> we had to change the whole stage. They put him on the other side. It's like, no, yeah. you can't look at him from that side. It's you're like horrible. Harvey Dent from Batman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. two faces. <laughs> but let me explain. Like, uh, I have uh, justification because like my face will be seen by millions of people, right? So uh -huh. I'm not happy with that. I think I have <laughs> I, a, a, I, yeah. a bit of say. I understand yeah. that. But I, I, I'm bringing it up because <laughs> I, I honestly think that is that it's not um, like people wouldn't notice. Yeah. Oh no, the, the whole community will try like... <laughs> yeah, no, that, after this, we're will. going straight on Twitter and we're going to do a vote from your left side and right side. And say, oh no, which is the good, which is the bad. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe you get used to it, just like Ryan got used to it, that's right. So he hated it at the beginning, but... I don't want that to be my catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. My left side's my good side. Yeah. Right, so your left side. Do you have one good side, Lex? No, both sides are my good side. You do look very symmet symmetrics. <laughs> no, I'm I'm not. I'm disfigured, dude. I'm like I'm like a gremlin over here, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't. It, it, everybody's got their own weird stuff. Don't worry about it, Dan. You Amazing. look beautiful on both sides. Yeah, my yeah. embarrassing thing is that uh, all of you viewers out there would be very surprised to know how many times behind the desk I'm standing on a box because <laughs> Danny is like a full <laughs> foot taller than me. And I'm small, <laughs> for the record. <laughs> how about you? Okay. I uh, know oh you, you are making the questions, not anything. <laughs> em embarrassing things for you? Yeah, no, yeah. I, I don't really have any. You, you, Danny's a pr pretty cool guy, honestly. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so here's one. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I know that we're not like diving deep into the upcoming changes with the Brawl Pass, yeah. which is smart because we haven't tried it yet. Let's give it a shot, see how it goes. But this topic does kind of broach it indirectly. 
So I know that there's a lot of players who feel like Brawl Stars is becoming increasingly more pay to win. And while, of course, you know, people who pay to buy stuff in games should be rewarded for those things. At the same time, uh, there's many, including myself, who don't like the ever increasing power disparity between pay to win and free to or free to play and paying players. Is there, you know, what are your thoughts on this topic? And you know, moving forward, how far down to this rabbit hole do we go? Yeah, I think it's a good topic to talk about. I think the thing we can't like be tied to, or like we shouldn't prevent ourselves to do, is to give more to people who are actually willing to support the game, right? Like, sure. why is it bad that like if you are like willing to spend your money on a game to support it, why shouldn't we give you more? Like, uh, it it's something that. So that means that the only way for a player to actually have like this difference between like a free-to-play account and a uh, to get more power is like to spend a lot. It's like that. That is even more predatory, right? It's like if we because like it's already uh, a reality. Like if you want to max out your account on day one, you can spend a lot of gen. I don't recommend that to anyone, <laughs> by the way. Uh, buy the passes is the best offer we have. Um, but yeah, I think it is like um, I don't know. Uh, what is that meme? Like, it's uh, honest work, right? We are giving more if you are willing to, to support the game. And if we don't have people supporting the game, then it's bad for everyone. So I guess uh, we are not, like, so worried about that because it's already a reality that, like, but we are giving more to people who are willing to, uh, to like, go a bit beyond than just playing the game. So I think uh, we, we see, like, uh, of course, like, we don't want to have like more players being stronger than the, um, the free-to-play players. But also like with the new uh, pass, this is also not a reality because you only use certain number of brawlers to play, right? It's like it's not like if you are compare maxed accounts, then yes, then like people are max uh, the account faster. But like who, who does that? <laughs> yeah, the average player <laughs> like, yeah, doesn't. When, we are, when you are playing a game, you play like your 15 brawlers, and we are already giving more resources to the free-to-play players. So, like, competitive, uh, we are going to be actually in a better scenario than we were before. So, right. yeah, I wouldn't be too worried no, about I, that. No, I, I totally get it from that perspective that, obviously, people who, sh who are, you know, shelling out their money to help support the game, obviously, they should be rewarded for doing yeah. so. No, no objection there. Um, I do, and I think that for most p people that they didn't, you know, they missed that they or they just read the headlines, they missed out <laughs> yeah. on the details of the pass. That it is actually better for the vast majority of people. The changes that the brawl pass is going to be bringing. Um, now, like, in, and I, I do have a very fringe case, of course, when on my free to play account where I'm pushing all of my brawlers up high. Oh, I see, I see. It's definitely not as good for me there because the, you know, the disparity between my account and a maxed out account is going to continue to grow, which I find a little bit frustrating. Although I will say, you guys, uh, your, your power level scaling on each level, mm. you made me upgrade some brawlers. Yeah. Begrudgingly sure. so. <laughs> <laughs> like playing level 9 brawlers up around 700 trophies, is, is, it gets pretty rough. So I, yeah. I did have to upgrade some brawlers, which I'm not happy about. But yeah. uh, I, I don't know. I just think that this topic is it's always a little bit touchy, I guess, when you bring in yeah. uh, money. And, uh, and I think that we also might have been spoiled a bit. Maybe you can confirm this that, mm -hmm. like, for the past many years, Brawl has been a, an extremely free to play friendly game. Mm. And maybe <laughs> too much so, <laughs> or it's so that it now it seems like any changes seem so drastic to the free to play player base. I don't know. Yeah. I just don't want to see, you know, too much monetization yeah at the end Although of the day I'm all, like, I'm, all, I'm all for monetization yeah well I, now people can use code lex win the pass because it's iap right <laughs> <laughs> but of course like uh, yes, absolutely yeah i think uh it is a, a thing that uh like it's a, kind of a taboo that like people are not very open about it but like if we monetize the game well we can actually grow the game in all sorts like we can increase the size of our team like we can uh, show the company that the game is worth invest investing on or in, mm -hmm. uh, or we can like make uh, make more, more ads. Lore. Yeah, yeah, more lore. Like yeah. people love the lore, right? Mm -hmm. We can create like lots of those animations that people like to see. It's like uh, 
if we monetize well and it's not a, in a predatory way, we are like asking too much for a very few people. Like we are asking little, a, a bit of money for a lot of people. And, and then uh, if we monetize well, it, it is better for everyone because the pass gives you more value. So it means like in the, in, in the long run, you are spending less because you are getting more for your investment. Uh, which makes the game, uh, which makes the game continue to <laughs> exist for the free-to-play players. So I think it is a bit uh, uh, we uh, tricky to talk about those things because I see like yeah, if you talk about money, then like it becomes like the top headline, like uh, you are a greedy uh, person and everything. But I don't know, like it, it's a business, right? And you need we need to exist. Like if you like the game. Yeah, you should be happy that someone else is actually supporting it. <laughs> sure, and I and I said that in in my videos that you know if every single player who played Brawl Stars never spent any money, there would be no Brawl Stars. It would cease to exist. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, somebody's got to be paying for all the development, yeah. and you know, luckily there's a lot of players out who love the game and are willing to spend some money on the game, and that's not a bad thing. That's a good mm -hmm. thing. It not only makes the game exist, but it also provides jobs for everybody that yeah. are working on the team. I mean, it's a, it's a good thing. Um, and I think that overall, that Brawl Stars has been extremely generous uh, in most things in come, when it comes to monetization. Uh, I will say that on the free pass, and we'll see more uh, when it actually comes out. The only thing I one of the thing one of the two things that I didn't like about it, from what I read, willing to wait and see, but the feeling that it gives somebody when they buy the pass, it's like it's a special moment. It's like, oh, this time I get to buy the pass. Even so, now ah, yeah, even yeah. if a free to play player isn't getting it and they're still getting more rewards which they will be that that feeling's kind of gone a little bit but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. still in the end it's going to be better for the vast majority of people which is a great thing yeah but that that's like i guess there's no other way around it we just thank it and we we are yeah, very yeah. uh honest about it like that's that's the nerf right sure. yeah yeah so. yeah and uh, actually uh if you monetize well it allow things like squat uh, busters Ooh. to actually be made so like it's Bring not on only Brawl, right, but it's the company and allow like more uh new games to be released you or guys have been pumping out yeah. a lot of games in the beta here lately yeah yeah and and actually uh, it gives the freedom for like if uh I'm, i don't want to that this scenario happens but if squad buster doesn't uh work out we have the freedom to say like let's not release this game because it's not worth it like we don't we don't have the pressure to release a game because like we can still support ourselves with the live games we have right so we hope it doesn't happen <laughs> but um it's it's good to be in the situation which like most of the companies are not most of the companies are like there is a publish mm -hmm. behind it and like ship this game on that date and then they have to ship something that they don't believe all right so here's a question i guess for all of you what do you guys feel like is the biggest mistake that Brawl Stars has ever made? Whoa. Going to landscape. What? <laughs> oh. hey. hey, I love I love Portrait Brawl. I'm with you. I actually at, at the time yeah. I was in that brawl talk with Ryan when when I when I oofed yep. him. But uh the like it, the community hated it. It ended up being the right thing, obviously, but uh like it was very hated in the time. <laughs> Yeah, I just love, I mean, as I said it, and I, I don't really mean it because I love the game as it is right now, mm -hmm. so I just got used to it, but, like, I I just miss portrait games. Like, I, I like playing mm -hmm. with one hand when yeah. I'm, while I'm doing something else. Eating, yeah, yeah. And all the games that I, I love the most are all, all of uh, on mobile, they are port, uh, landscape. So mm -hmm. I'm always, like, forced to stop doing whatever I'm doing to play a match and I, I, I would just love to have this kind of game where I can just you know like uh, do, 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 do like this you know like Clash Mini mm -hmm. or but yeah so I, I, I would have loved to see the game um, so I'm, I'm curious to know like in the in, in the case where like Brawl Stars um, survived as a portrait game mm -hmm. like how how yeah, would it be yeah, yeah. like I would I would love yeah. to know that uh, but yeah yeah <laughs> that was that was the exact original theory was that it's easier to play yeah. with one hand that's why it was developed initially that way yeah. that was the whole premise mm. but yeah then of course many of the things that we see today in brawl wouldn't make sense on a portrait yeah. right. uh, yeah. and i think portrait game and and also it, we would be much more limited on the things we can do 
like, oh, of course it was the right decision, but like, <laughs> still <laughs> like, damn it, it only because we saw it once, mm -hmm. like this thought will never like go completely yeah. away. <laughs> People always want what they can't have. Yeah. <laughs> How about for you, Ryan? Worst mistake ever. Man, that's a really hard one. I mean, I, it's hard because um, when I'm thinking about all the things, not all the things, some of the things that we did that I maybe disagreed with, the reasoning was there yeah, yeah, yeah. as to why we did it wrong. So I, it's hard for me to, to think about the result without the path there. Um, I'd say probably uh, the worst mistakes were during beta when we remade the meta so many times. Mm. We made metas that just did not work, that were way off, and then we scrapped the whole thing and made a left turn, and we... we reinvented the game many 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 times in a row but again it was part of the path to get yeah. to the thing that worked but yeah we it took us a long time to get right do you have something in these months or maybe it could be some from where yeah something uh, I, I guess more um related to the work that we yeah, do yeah. that is uh actually related to the skins Ah, Whenever, yeah. when we made the question to the community about the skins, mm. yeah. we uh, about bringing back uh, exclusive skins or with uh, some color changes or some kind of detail changes or something, I feel that it was such an important thing and we wanted to, to really get uh, the, the community viewpoint, but we could have waited maybe a little bit more and get like the message a bit refined or something and we ended up doing like this whole text that was like really nice structured like we gave like a lot of cool details like yeah. we said like what we would like to do what would be some of the things and we even like told so many times that we were taking into account people's feedback but then for some reason we put this poll yeah in the game and like people kind of freaked out a little bit especially when they started seeing that the uh, bringing back option was uh, was winning, winning by far yeah, yeah. And even though we were like, just keeping on saying that, uh, like we we are not only taking this into yeah, account, we're yeah. also taking into account the comments. Like, it, it felt like a a mistake from from our side of of things. Let's say. Yeah, yeah. Because like from from my side, I think many times I've uh, reacted too fast on community uh, questions or something. Like, if someone because like of course the community is very. Uh, emotional as well, yeah. but we shouldn't react on the same uh, uh, emotion. Like we should be the ones that tone it down and then answer it in a normal way. But sometimes it happens that uh, someone is acu acu accusing you of something, then you get like triggered and then you answer immediately. Mm. Like, ah, man, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> and now like I'm, I'm more controlled. Like you can see that I'm not super active on Twitter, for example. It's just because like, yeah, if there's a question that's really relevant, then I answer in the next day. Or if this question will be answered by like a game update or whatever, then I, I don't answer because like, what is the point, right? I can give you like uh, one day before like knowledge, but then the game will answer. So like, I feel like the more I'm in this role, the less I feel like the individual Danny matters. It's more like the, the broadcasting this information, right? So like, how can I inform more people about this specific thing rather than answering this one player? So like, it kind of sacrifices the, um, proximity or like the closeness that we have we have to the players but at the end of the day I believe that at least more people are being formed but uh, yeah that was like my mistakes but I guess like if you're looking for the broad thing then I think undoubtedly for me in my period was the gears I was thinking uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The next yeah. I was and then say. actually because uh, like what Ryan was still in the team and I remember I was talking to Ryan and I feel like Ryan, I don't think this is gonna go well. And then I was like, uh, should I tell the team on anything? And then Ryan said like, yeah, please. Um, it's better like if you speak out rather than you keep to yourself. And then I made like a long text of like, why I don't think this is good. Um, like why we are not reaching our goals. And of course, like we discussed with the team and then we ended up um, going with it because at the end of the day, we also like, uh, we have to be humble to like, that we don't know what will be the outcome of mm -hmm. the things, right? We have to put it out there to see how it goes, but well, like a self tap on my shoulder, everything that I point out started happening as like, almost like a prophecy. And then I felt like, oh, <laughs> I actually, I know what I'm talking about. So like, I felt like proud of myself, but, um, and then uh, the, another thing <laughs> is that when we had this update, we were filming the Brawlies and then I was filming a message to the community on the same day they were hating me so much. 
And then it's like, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's like, like, you guys are great, <laughs> but not those 10,000 messages yeah. I just got. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's nice that you, you have to think of like, okay, so on lo long term, this will like be a problem that will go away or like we will solve somehow. And then let's mm. do the next thing, right? Because of course, like the problems will be like, I don't know, uh, three weeks later. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was tough. But yeah, I think it's tricky with stuff like years, for example, because um, sometimes you think about the features from your, well, most of the time from your own, own experience yeah. and your yeah. own way of playing the game. And of course, we are not game designers. We we just players and community managers. So we we kind of know the know the players. We we know the games we like, how we like things. And for me, gears it was something that I I wasn't interested in because mm. because I I play bro in a very casual way, and I I am more into cosmetics and stuff than progression itself. So for me, it was like, well, ah, yeah, sure, I will buy some. I will just watch Kairo, uh, Kairos videos mm. uh, about like which one is better for its character. And that's it, but I wasn't excited about it. But mm -hmm. then uh, some of the people who are more on the like competitive um, side or like they, they are more like more hardcore players, they were like really into this concept. And I was like, whoa, okay. So if we, if we manage to hype people as yeah. like these people are right now, then mm -hmm. this is a great feature. And yeah. I won't care about it, but like yeah. apparently I th pro maybe many people will care about it. So... So it's like it's super tricky to flag these things because you never know if it's just based on your experience, if this applies also to other people or like, yeah, so it, it gets really, really complicated. I think that's so important to point out that we try our best to have a sixth sense to know yeah. how the community will react, if they'll love a feature or hate a feature, but still we're doing our best guess <laughs> and we don't know until yeah. it's in the yeah. player's hands. And I think you guys, Lex, when you get the early access, you've loved some things that we've put out and then we've all been stunned if the community didn't like it. Right. No, I think that it's one of those things where even, even if you think that the community is going to not initially take well to it. Mm. If you still think that it's in the best interest yeah. for the game long term, you're still going to ship it because yeah. you think that they're not going to like it. They're going to get used to it. And in the end, it'll be a better thing for the, the game. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The thing yeah. that the gears weren't. <laughs> so that's why we reward right, right. eventually. Yeah. Like I think that on the gears update, it wasn't so I, the gears were definitely boring to yeah. me. They still are a little bit, but uh, it was more like, adding two levels at the same time. Yeah, it just yeah. felt like mm. such an insurmountable thing. Yeah. Like I spent $5,000 in one video and I still didn't Ooh. even fully max out. <laughs> I really regret that video, by the way. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. But we learned right, well, from if, that. If, yeah. since, go ahead. What? We learned from that. And then if we could go back, we would probably, of course, like have the gears in a rework design, but I was like releasing only one power level instead of two. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, well, speaking of gears and the boring, so it's kind of centered around that because uh, I was actually talking to Kairos yesterday and we were both talking about how, A, we still feel like hypercharge is too expensive, but because like whenever you're leveling up, like when you get your gadget at level seven, it feels so worth that extra mm -hmm. thousand coins. It's like, oh, this is a really impactful thing. And then the gears are just like, eh, what's well, whatever. Star powers, which cost twice as much of a gear, don't usually feel as impactful as a gadget. Sorry, I, I misspoke. So star powers feel less impactful than a gadget do. Depends on the star power, but for the most part. And then hypercharges, while are very cool, for five times the cost, they don't feel like they give you five times the fun. It's almost like the awesome factor is almost inverted a little bit yeah. between gadgets and hypercharges. Do you still feel that hypercharges are priced right? Could we possibly see a reduction in cost or I think is that just it? I would say like, uh, like I don't know what the thing feels about it. So like I'm speaking to, for myself, but I think that the thing approach would be to actually make the hypercharge to feel the thing that mm -hmm. you are missing instead of like decreasing yeah. the price. Because I think like economy wise, I think we are in a good place right now and it allows mm -hmm. us to buff uh, progression, which means that most of the, pl the player base will benefit from that because most of the players don't even reach power 11 anyway right so like uh like they reach with some brawlers it's like if we give room to ourselves to buff progression in a general way because hypercharges cost this price it's actually beneficial for the whole community actually even if some has to pay the price <laughs> of the hypercharge mm -hmm. but uh, yeah i think it's better like if you fix the design rather than the price because at least we are in a good place 
economically. Okay. Yeah. That's that's fair enough. Yeah. Why, why are you talking about buffs? When are we going to get a buff to coins, Danny? Like every time I go to <laughs> just up, up, upgrade yeah. a brawler. No, no, no. I want more. We want more. <laughs> because I don't know. we yeah. always want more, Danny. Hey, it's like whenever I go oh, go to upgrade a brawler, I don't even look at my power points. It's like mm. I know I have enough of those. It's it's pure. The bottleneck is pure coins. I give think, us more coins. For the love of God and everything that's holy, <laughs> give us more coins. I think the issue is that coins are very, I say, like when people ask for a buff, they want to see like a clear buff in Brawl Pass, which is like a recurrent uh, thing that you can always see how in the long term is getting buffed, right? But today we just announced that the Mega Pig event will be run for four weekends in a four row. Four weeks. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's already awesome. a, a buff, right? And then as we communicated in the... Um, uh, in the Brawl Pass communication, we want to run more crazy events like the star shooting star drops or things like that. It's mm -hmm. so, like we want to have like this, uh, I say, budget of resources that we can include in those events to make those events uh, better. It's like uh, I don't. Okay, think, so like yeah. you're just saying that basically like instead of like a static, yeah, you know, yeah. nonstop buff, you know, you're having bigger special events and that would be the buff to those things. That's yeah. cool and that's good for you know like me and players to look at it in that respect. That's cool. Yeah. But I guess the, the, the bad uh, thing of that is that players don't perceive no. as a buff because they see this as a bonus, right? So I guess. But right. It, it is. It is exactly yeah. the way I've always looked at it as well. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Here's a, here's a, this is more of a <laughs> topic slash suggestion slash maybe. But, and it's not a new one, but, you know, star drops, which I think star drops are pretty great. If you ask over on Reddit, they probably would disagree with me. <laughs> but I think that they're fine with the exception of the cosmetics in there. Mm. Because while it's always cool to get a cosmetic and, you know, it's, you know, worth something, it always feels like I'm going to get that one cosmetic that I don't even... It's like, oh, cool. I got this profile icon that I will never use. Or, hey, I just got a Mythic Star drop and I got Constructor Jackie. Yay! <laughs> Um, that actually Aww. happened to me the other day. It was yeah. kind of disappointing. That's nice. Instead of like giving somebody a standard drop, why couldn't you make like a rarity token? Like you get an epic skin token in this mm. where you can go over to the catalog and pick out whatever skin you actually want so that that reward actually feels like a reward and not yeah. a disappointment. Yeah, I guess like there, there of course, maybe could have a being, could have, uh, we could have a better balance. But the thing is that random ability allows us to give more. It's like uh, if we, if you can't pick what you want, then it means that we can give you we, we can give you more bling value. Because like if you give like exactly what you want, you pick like ah I want this ping and this, and then you never buy again. It's like the the thing is that we can we are allowed to give more okay. resources because of the randomness. Because like what we see is that people buy their the skin they want. And they are cool. <laughs> like, but hey, we, we have like so many skins. Like, can you buy other ones as well? It's like, uh, yeah. I guess I didn't look at it from that perspective of yeah. like, you got something for, you know, out of a star drop that would might have an effect on your purchasing decisions in the yeah, game. Yeah. I, I've never really looked at it. Never, never connected those two dots. Um, I still, I still wish that I could choose yeah something on and there and some say yeah. like uh, i guess our game designer keeps saying like bad bad results are actually they make the good results better <laughs> uh, okay oh that's gonna be cool. <laughs> oh, not yeah. getting slapped <laughs> not but, getting slapped in the or getting slapped yeah, yeah. in the face makes it feels great when you don't get slapped exactly in the face. <laughs> no. but it's funny because um this is kind of related but uh, for star drops, because you mentioned that uh, when you get cosmetics, uh, especially if you don't like those cosmetics, that you get kind of like, meh, like feeling. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because every mm -hmm. time I open a star drop, I'm like, Jesse Pin, please, 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 <laughs> Jesse Pin. And I never, and I always get like credits, coins that I. Other I, resources. I, yeah, yeah, what everyone like, wants. For yeah. me, it's like the opposite. So, but uh, actually, what I've been, and then I've been thinking, like, why do do I not like really enjoy Star Drops that mm. much? And I think for me it's something similar, but like I wouldn't like to choose the rewards mm. because that's a lot of like this the decision making I need to do and I don't like that. <laughs> so I prefer <laughs> that you give me something. But it's true that what I don't like about Star Drops is that the the pool of rewards is so big. Yeah. It's and it's mm. it's so like you, you don't know what to expect. So okay, you you get the rarity and it's like, oh it's gonna be mythic. But within 
mythic. You got you got so many different yeah. things, the possibilities that it's like mm-hmm. uh, I'm I'm not sure if I'm excited because yeah. if I I can get so many things that like hmm, and then I never get what I want because I I want you know I want a skin and I never get, and I never get a skin or I I want a uh, yeah a pin or an emote and I never get that. So for me I think that the, the mm. My biggest problem with Stardrop is that they are not really like grouped into like different rewards. So mm. like, uh, for me the, the idea like a uh, perfect scenario would be where like the Stardrops would have mm. different like so okay this is the Stardrop for resources. Ah, like so a you know yeah. yeah, and right. this is the Stardrop for resource uh, yeah cosmetics. Mm-hmm. So at least you know like yep. you, your expectations are already like you know set at least on that group of things you can get. So that's, th- I think that's my my uh, my biggest thing with Star Yeah, drops. I think like an uh, improvement to Star Drops is, it is in the roadmap somewhere, but it's not like, I think it's not in the next update or anything. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it is something that we want to improve to have the s- more good results than mm-hmm. uh, upsetting ones. Mm-hmm. But wouldn't it be great if you can play an event called Mega Pig and get up to <laughs> 20 Star Drops <laughs> in one event. This episode is sponsored by <laughs> today's Mega, Pod- Mega Pig. Yeah, I was going to say, today's video is sponsored by Mega Pig. <laughs> but yeah. But I, I was really happy when the, when they, uh, when, when you introduced Star Drops uh, mm. as a like replacement kind of for the boxes. Yeah. I think it brought mm-hmm. a lot of the excitement yeah. that maybe the community lost a bit with the, with the boxes uh, being gone. So it's, it's really cool still. All right, I got a question for specifically for Ryan, because I know that Uh-oh. it was. I, I know the no, it's a good question. It's it's a it's a fun question. Um, how close was Brawl Stars to actually being killed? <laughs> Extremely close. Like uh, during during those eighteen months, we as a team pr- probably talked once a week about whether we should kill brawl stars like it was a very common discussion and and just to give a little context i think many of you know this but at supercell we want to make games that are played for years and remembered forever so the bar is really really high and we needed brawl stars to get to that bar before we could consider a global launch so as a game team working on a beta this bar that you want to hit is important and there's also this idea that if you believe that the game you're working on just isn't going to get there it's on you to kill that game and move on to a new project so you can make the next thing. And that's kind of the thought process that we had throughout. And we were, I think, it it was a healthy discussion on whether we should kill the game. But for a long time, we were far from the metrics that we needed to get to. But I'll repeat the thing that we all knew is that the core gameplay was good. We all knew it was good the whole time. So we had to figure out, was it the meta? Was it skins? Was it, what were we missing? What was the missing piece there? And we all believed we could find it. But there was a moment in uh, 2018, I don't know. Mm -hmm. There was a moment one summer, this is before we launched on Android and beta. And we we launched Android during that summer. Before summer, we were all pretty convinced we would kill the game. We were fairly certain. And so launching on Android was like a last Mm -hmm. dash. It was a Hail Mary to just say, you know what? Let's put it on Android. We'll go on Finland. We go on summer break in July. Let's put it on Android. Let's see what happens. And that was our kind of our last hope. And we went on summer break and we got back and the metrics were good. They were better. Things were improving. And we realized at that moment that people want to play with their friends. Yeah. And when you're only on one uh, one platform, you can't because some of your friends are on Android, some are on iPhone, and you can't invite all of your friends to play this game. So that was one of the magic keys that started to unlock it for us and made made the game a lot more feasible. But a very long-winded way of answering your question, yeah, we were close many <laughs> times, many times. How different uh, so many lives would be had it been yeah. killed. Absolutely. And I'm Mine really and my thankful. family's included. Everybody yeah. at that table. 100%. Like, yeah, had, yeah. Your lives would be so much different right now. Yeah. now and it took the belief of a killed. lot of people Kinda on crazy. the Brawl team to just stand up and say, we know this game is good. We know we can do it. Including Frank, who came in some months before that and basically said, this game is too good to kill. And he came into the team with a vision and said, we're going to make it work. We have to make it work. And that really helped us, you know, get over the hump and launch it. Beautiful. <laughs> That's awesome. Danny, give us some com- questions from the community. All right, let's go. We can maybe like do a speed run because you have lots. Um, 
Uh, from Nana, hello, I love the Brawl Stars community. Thank you so much. What was uh, your most memorable moment in the community? Uh, first Brawl Talk. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, the reaction. Hello, Nana, by the way. I'm not sure where to look. <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, I think, I think so. I was so nervous, so like everything. Many emo emotions, but like seeing the reaction and the people and like seeing the comments after that, like it was, it was just so cool. Like I, I cannot even explain, but like that moment, I think I really, really treasure it. And my, and my goodbye, um, like mm. my whole goodbye situation. That was really something super like that I, that I carry with me as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, about that, like I was like uh, super, cause like I'm all about entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> like I want to make like Brawl Talk like the most, the best uh, entertainment piece it can be. Uh, in the game industry but then i was like oh so paul is leaving like let's make a very emotional moment like oh let's have some tears yeah and like i uh, like no but like <laughs> she she can do like whatever everyone's like uh i wrote like some um speech but i said like paul ignore that like write with your own words mm -hmm. um but then like when she was talking and then she cry started crying then i felt really bad like oh no i I didn't want that to happen, <laughs> right? I feel like I'm exploiting this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would have yeah. cried anyway. It was a really <laughs> big thing for me as well. I'm very yeah. like, w even when I was writing the s the speech, I was like, oh, this is gonna be hard. And then <laughs> and then it was like three. I remember like very very clearly. It was three takes. The first take I could do it. Yeah. Kind of okay. Then we did it again, just you know, like to have this multiple takes just in case. Torturing Paula. Yeah, the <laughs> second, I was like already no, like okay. Mm. And the third one, I exploded. Like the, the third time, I had to go through the speech again. Uh -huh. I was like, I, I just you can mm. use this take, but like I'm not gonna do it again. <laughs> yeah, I remember I was also like uh, shooting. I was already here at that time, yeah. and mm. I was like just behind the scenes shooting like some uh, behind the scenes scenes with the with the phone. And when I started seeing Paula crying, I started. <laughs> feeling super guilty and I just put the phone down. <laughs> <laughs> I deleted the video yeah. and I was like, okay, I'm not going to do anything. Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> yeah. How about for you? The, be the me most memorable moment? Most memorable moment. I think um, you would think it would be the global launch mm. when we launched the game across the world. But actually for me, it was when we announced that mm. we were going to go global. That was my favorite moment and definitely the most memorable for those who weren't around, I played a very dirty trick on everyone mm. and very heavily implied <laughs> to everybody that we were going to kill the game and uh, deleted everything off of all of our social media and just put one post that said we need to talk. And I didn't tell the YouTubers. I didn't <laughs> tell anybody what was going on except that there was a big announcement. And seeing uh, everyone's reaction to that was like the dream come true from when I was a little kid. It was great. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. For you as well. Both it was fun. I still, yeah. I still think that I, I will always think of the moment in Helsinki when me, Kairos, and Ash pressed the button mm -hmm. to launch Brawl Stars yes. globally, uh, on in Europe and in the U.S. That was just like uh, the culmination of eighteen months of work and not knowing to it's real. This is live. This is a whole new chapter to my life, which was a pretty special moment. How about you, Marcio? Yeah, I would say the Brawl Talk as well. Yeah. Like it's it's something that I always saw, like working on other companies as well and like from the outside, like just seeing this thing that looked so fun to do and like so imaginative and there was like so like the costumes, the uh, the backgrounds, like everything. And the first time that I actually saw you guys doing like the Rumble Jungle, I yeah, think. Yeah. Like that was I a was, really nice set. Yeah, I was Good so impressed studio. by the set. Really I was like, Oh my god, I can't believe that I'm actually gonna be in one of these uh -huh. things and then actually shooting the one with the with the fight and, the, <laughs> and a very special thing was that there was the three of us there as well mm -hmm. so i ah, see yeah, yeah. you guys a lot and i was like oh my god this is kind of you know the dream <laughs> uh -huh. working with these two guys so it was like very very emotional and i was just trying to be serious all the time and not be like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. But yeah. yeah, I think for me, it's, it's not even about, well, it is related to Brawl Talk, but I think it was when we released the f first lore piece, like the um, Star Park mm -hmm. campaign. Cause like we, we are doing like this premiere. We are like, we, we are heading crazy, crazy numbers. And I think, was it the year after? Like we got like 1 million uh, people watching uh, the premiere at the same time, which is like a crazy 
number, right? Mm -hmm. But then like these, uh, yeah, so we were having like the Star Park campaign and Brawl Talk was like glitching already. And then like it starts getting weirder and then my head explodes. <laughs> and then like in a live stream oh, yeah. with like 800,000 people <laughs> watching, there was a like, silence. Like nobody was commenting anything because they were like, what, what's happening, right? <laughs> and then like, <laughs> It was the first time I see like a stream like getting silent, mm -hmm. uh, like in because prior to that the chat was like yeah, so yeah, fast yeah, it yeah. was like unreadable. It yeah. was so so quick, and then for a moment <laughs> it just stopped. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I think it was like the most impressive uh, moment. And then in this uh, there was a comment I still remember. Is someone say like make it stop, <laughs> 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 which is exactly what we wanted with the campaign. So. Yeah, I think it was such a powerful moment. So I have a question for you all. It's from, it's actually this. That's the name of the player. What do you think of the current state of the community right now? Very broad. Yeah, maybe not if you are not following. But Have you been following? I'm Did following, he accuse but I me think of not following? <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm the, the community. I'm always lurking, but I think it's better that, that you guys comment on it. Ah, okay. You know better. Maybe Lex, oh. I would like to see yeah. Lex's point of view. Well, I mean, the, he did say right now, and right now there's a lot of uncertainty, I think, mm. from players that, you know, they're nervous about upcoming changes, and rightfully so. But I think that in the end, they'll find that it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. So overall, I think people are, you know, pretty generally good. But, you know, we have our moments, and this happens to be one of those, you know, anxious moments. Change is always hard to, you know, digest at first. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I think that uh, in in the end, once they see it all and once you get to play it, hopefully it'll all be great and everybody will be happy. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I, I think there's a little bit of tension. Like, people know that uh, the game is going through some changes. There's lots of stuff happening, and there's lots of things planned to happen as well. But uh, overall, it's still good to see like especially from my point of view as a, a newcomer that mm. there's a lot of trust in the developers yeah. a lot of trust in the team a lot of trust in us trying to do the the right thing which i believe that we are yeah and uh also being honest about it and uh i think that's something that's been persisting at least from my time here and i haven't seen that change so yeah yeah actually talk about trust and then i think that's that a thing that i think it's funny because like we haven't we have like a proven history of like listening to the players and changing things that is not working out. But then every time you release something, they're like, oh no, it's the time. Now they are going like full like page to win <laughs> and those greedy <laughs> bastards. And like, 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 haven't we given them enough uh, uh, examples for you to trust us? But um, I think it's funny. It's just like an emotional reaction. And, mm. and actually that was the part of the strategy of the communication we, we did with the Brawl Pass. Cause we knew like the first day it's going to be all about emotions, right? We don't yeah. want to expect anyone to go deep and like see the benefits or the actual changes. And then I even told like Paula and Drew, cause like I, actually I, I shared the document with Drew, which has been through a similar situation with Royale, right? It's like mm -hmm. he, he shared the learnings, like how he would have done uh, better. So like it was really useful for us as well. But then I told like my strategy is like we drop the content, I go play PS5 for like the next <laughs> few days, and then on Monday I'll see the comments, and which never happened. Yeah, I actually <laughs> was reading the comments, but anyway, <laughs> but I did play some uh, Spider-Man. Uh, but um, yeah, so I think um, the state is that uh, I think we've yeah we've given like a, a lot of uh, examples of like why they should trust us and like what we want is what they should want as well because the best for the game. Uh, but, um, I think like right now we are in a good place because they know they can like, uh, trust us and read the communications we are providing there. And then everything we put out there, we kind of like solve quickly. Like for example, the exclusive Kings, uh, drama or, uh, pol um, polemic that we, yeah, we made a mistake on how we awarded and how we, uh, asked the question, mm -hmm. but then we quickly came to a solution that pleased most of the the players and now with the past that is like it's not exactly like a bad news but uh it's actually above to progression so yeah lots of things i, I think we are one not one thing i do appreciate the one thing i appreciate 
with the way you guys did this, Danny, I will say is that a you gave us a long heads up. I mean, this these yeah. changes aren't going to be taking place until early next yeah. year, which is a great thing. Thank you for giving us such a big heads up. And secondly, is that you know there wasn't any kind of like uh, cryptic language mm-hmm. or anything. You just you laid it all out exactly what's going to happen. So there's nothing hidden. It's all transparent, and we know when it's going to happen and what exactly is going to happen and so i think that that's a big thing to you know help uh, bolster the trust that you have built in with the community yeah and that's part of the (laughs) 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 yeah and that's part of our vision i got the air horn (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah it's part of our vision as well of uh, the the relationship we want to have with the community is one of trust of clarity of like giving everything that we can to to the players and letting them make the choices that uh, that they want to do like yeah. having all the information to be able to make the best choices and the most valuable for them yeah and their strategy was also like to put everything out right to break down the feature as much uh, as much as we can because then you can like either like or dislike but at least you are informed right there yeah. is no mystery or like exactly. anything that's like uh, what what about the future it's like it, everything is like at least down there like you just have to read and uh, wait. <laughs> yeah, you may not you may not like the changes, yeah. you know, before even seeing them. But you may not like them, but, but at least you know everything that's happening. Yeah. Nothing's being hidden from you. Yeah, and I think broadly speaking, on the health of the community, we don't necessarily need the community to be happy and agree with us yeah. all the time. The important thing is that they care. We actually want them to disagree, express mm-hmm. their desires for the game, tell us things we did wrong or that we could do better. That's super crucial to making the game better. Yeah. And to uh, quote one of the other community managers here at Supercell, the only time she says, the only time she would be scared for her game's community is if the reaction it, not that it's negative, but that it's silence. Yeah. That there's no reaction. Because that means the players stopped caring. Yeah. And that's the time I, as a community manager, would be scared or yeah. would think that the community yeah. is yeah. is uh, unhealthy. Because every player, I think, has a vision for the game that's in their heads. And that because they love the game and they see the future of it that they want mm-hmm. to happen. And of course, we have millions of players and <laughs> yeah. we can't deliver millions of different <laughs> visions. So naturally, we'll, we'll give something that won't be exactly what they hope for, but ha- hopefully it's something that they'll end up enjoying. At least that's the goal. Yep. Cool. Next question then from Elemental Studios. What is your opinion on the fun art people create? Oh, it's so good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so good. So amazing. Yeah. I th- yeah. It's one of the things I pay actually the most attention. Like, and yeah. I just love going through Twitter, through everywhere, just to see a fan art. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have so many talented people. Like, Lex work with one of them, right? <laughs> yeah. But shout out to Schneider Pox. Yeah. yeah. He's amazing. Like, mm-hmm. when, he does a lot of artwork for my thumbnails. And lots of times, I'll. Oh, you guys would probably laugh if you saw him, but like I, I have a, an idea of what I want for a thumbnail. And so I draw out something, you know, on my, on my tablet. I draw it all out, you know, like the best that I'm able to. And then I send it to him. I'm like, bro, don't be jealous. Just, you know, give me your version of my beautiful artwork here. Mm-hmm. And, the, and him as well as all of the other like artists in the community, like they are so unbelievably talented that I couldn't even begin to do something like that. I mean, my drawings are, well, Schneider <laughs> Park we got to see horrible, one of Lex's drawings. Yeah, as a put it on the screen. Put screen. Or like, uh, send us and then you put it on the screen. <laughs> I'll, I'll send you, yeah. I'll send you a couple. Like, there's one that I did where like Crow was like the Professor Crow. It was for like a, a you know, all the yeah. brawlers explained in 14 minutes video I did. <laughs> my drawing <laughs> was so hilarious. It's so bad, but uh, I'll send you guys. You guys can pop it up on screen. Amazing. But it's really cool because also uh, through fan art is, is how the story of Brawl Stars and like yeah. all the lore mm-hmm. gets like mm-hmm. illustrated and how how people actually learn about the lore. I think it's mm-hmm. more from the fan yeah. art than from our official uh, stuff. So I think it's, it's very it's very magical to see to yeah. see that. And I think like when uh, I already said in another episode, but like the when we released Janet and Boney, where like it was a w- one liner. Like uh, we said, like Janet and Boney are sisters, and Stu is like their adopted father. And then like. And I don't know, like 10 minutes later, like full of fun arts, mm-hmm. like, like being like a family and everything. So like they understood mm-hmm. this one line mm-hmm. and they start creating their own story. So I think it was the highest number of fun art we got after a brawl talk. And it's like sometimes I don't even know how, how fast they are. Like it's so <laughs> fast. How yeah. they can make it. Right? 
And it's such a uh, detail and so pretty. Yeah, mm. it's amazing. I think like it's above average in the industry, right? I think for we, sure. Yeah, amazing. Some oh, of the best fan art I've seen. Yeah. Mm. I'm jealous as well. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could draw like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Power League Prodigy. What can you tell us about the changes to the creator program for website creators? Now, I wish we had Rick yeah. here. <laughs> uh, will the process for this type of creator be more formalized in the future? I guess, like, I, of course, I don't know because I, I don't work. Do you? Maybe you have more information? Yeah, so I think we've we've just made some changes to Creator Boost for them to help them support their websites even more. We're looking at... Uh, kind of formalizing a better way for them to get into the program. It's a bit difficult because for, you know, YouTube and other channels, we can look at subscriber numbers. Yeah. We have a lot of data we can pull, but for websites, it's a bit of a mystery. So we absolutely see that as uh, as something we need to fix. And we're, I think Rick has some ideas in his head yeah. on how we can improve that. Yeah. Keep an eye out. We'll get better. For shout sure. out to Rick because he's doing an amazing job. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's, it's also really, uh, it creates another hype moment because like in the parallel, like we are talking about the games, but then Rick like hypes his own stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. let's do like creator program uh, improvements. And um, the thing is also like, he's talking about websites and it is really, really tricky to have like a formalized or a structure for every single social media, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, we have Twitter creators asking like, is there like an option for Twitter or Facebook or mm -hmm. so it's uh, TikTok we recently added, right? So yeah, we, we do have yeah. support for TikTok. But um, yeah, it's, it's such a lot of work. It's not like just click one button and then, yeah, now we have like this social media. It needs to track something or like how we evaluate uh, a creator from specific social media. So yeah, it's really tricky. Like in the ideal world, every social media would be available in the creator program. But yeah, we have to pick our battles. Then from Zoom Paul. Hi guys. Uh, you probably look fantastic today. <laughs> and <Aww>. my question <laughs> Thank is you. Is as follow. What do you all think about the original characters that people make? Uh, like so like the brawlers they create. What is the real situation with an original character to be or not to be in the game? And besides that, do you guys have favorites? Wait, By original so characters is like a concept? Like yeah, brawlers oh. that the community created. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I love so. seeing some of the ones over I've seen on Reddit. Yeah. Um, the, especially the ones that they're like, they're fully fleshed out. Like it has all, not just a picture, which, which that's right. nice too, but like all of their, you know, abilities and everything yeah, else. Yeah, Although yeah. sometimes I've seen them like their main shot deals 9,000 damage and has <laughs> 75,000 hit points. It's like, okay, come on, get real, man. Yeah. But no, some of them are actually really, really cool concepts. I saw one called that they named the Brawler Lex. So, I mean, that's my favorite. That's the one. We got to get that in there. Yeah. <laughs> we Sometimes we even get letters from uh, yeah. kids yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. mostly. And uh, inside there is a design for a character and very, very like specific like mechanics and, and they write everything yeah, by hand and it's so cute. sweet. It's like, yeah. and then at that moment I can imagine the kid, you know, like drawing that. And it's like, this is so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was actually from me. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> it's still amazing. <laughs> but, yeah, like the edginess, like sometimes, like, of course, like they, they are young and like super hypey. Mm. And then it's like, uh, alien ninja whatever it's yeah. like it's always like these very edgy <laughs> topics right it's <laughs> so fun but I, I think nothing comes to my mind like on a specific i uh, mean uh, it would be super cool if we had like an easy way to implement that uh, mm -hmm. even if it would be like i don't know an, a special mode where you could use like these characters mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. but yeah i guess that it would uh be complicated to to bring like original concepts to, yeah, to the game with there's lore and then, of course like yeah. i would love like as in the community perspective to have one brawler mm. from the community but yeah like we are building like the lore and everything and every brawler needs to make sense with the others yeah. and so yeah it's tough unless like we give a brief like we want a brawler x to fit this trio yeah. or yeah or I maybe guess. like some sort of collaboration yeah. where we give yeah. like some mm. uh indication of the things that we can actually do yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's a cool idea yeah yeah i guess uh, Super there has been a situation though mm. there has been a situation where uh a, a brawler not not like per se a, a full concept but a brawler in general has made it into the game i remember when i did a video with paul and you danny mm. uh talking oh, about yeah. characters that <laughs> was it was it bb i think that was like the general concept of bb yeah uh 
Paul fleshed out and actually made it into the game. But I think for the most part, like the original, you know, concepts and stuff that people do, they're really cool. But, you know, the artists there at the team, they've got their own visions for stuff that they're usually working on. So they don't usually make their way into the game. But there has been a situation in the past where yeah. it has happened. And can you imagine, like, because uh, we have, like, so much drama with Supercell Make, and those are skins. <laughs> can you imagine if you oh, pick man. a brawler and, like, oh, I don't like this brawler. Yeah. Why did you pick this one? And I love that? it. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> but I still think, because I was going to mention Supercell Make, and I think Supercell Make takes us, like, a step closer to, like, these yeah. kind of things yeah. happening, like, in, a, in one way or another. And I think it's really, really... Really cool. Of course, with character, it's going to be uh, more challenging because yeah. there are many things you need to think about when you design a character, things that I don't even know. But the, the guys doing that, they, they know the things. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I think it's, it would be really cool if we at some point we could uh, implement something that is 100% made uh, and coming from the community. Hmm. Yeah. Um, H C B uh, for Ryan. Uh oh. There's two questions here. Like, did you enjoy your time as a community manager? What was your favorite thing about? I guess you kind of answered that. But there is a very important question here at the end. Is Danny Supercell cool? <laughs> is Danny Supercell? Is that yeah, your yeah, name? Yeah, it's, it's written. <laughs> it, no, I'm reading the <laughs> question. Oh, your at is Danny Supercell. I yeah. thought that was your full name, is Danny <laughs> Supercell. Yeah. Is Danny cool? That's why I got cool? hired. Yeah. Man, that's a tough question. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I think he's cool. Sometimes. I think for sure he's got tattoos. Sometimes, he's got sometimes. piercings, long hair. I'm very jealous. He's got the cool guy thing. Has a bad side he, though. He knows jujitsu. Oh, Sorry, like you know jujitsu. <laughs> you know jujitsu? No, no, just because I'm Brazilian. It oh, mean are what you about sure you don't know? know? Ah, I did. Uh, I did martial arts, but it was kung fu, not yeah. jujitsu. You know kung fu? Oh, kung fu. I thought it was jujitsu. Okay. Yeah. You know kung fu? Yeah, look but at like you. when I was very young. Dan is a triple black belt. Whoa. Is this going to be one of those things yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where you're going to one day try it and it's going to be like Neo and you're like, oh my God, I do know Kung Fu. No, I'm super <laughs> lazy. and <laughs> <not dead. laughs> Like a sofa, uh, potatoes uh, couch. But we need the video. Now we need the uh, Lex drawings and Danny. I'm on it. I'm on the case. Oh, God. Um, from Iceberg. Hi, Ting. I'm a big fan of all you. Uh, my question, how did the idea of Brawlies come about? Did you enjoy making them last year? Um, maybe, do you want to speak about Well, you, you can talk about the uh, idea itself. Okay, yeah. I can at least, before you start, yeah. say how every single Danny idea starts. <laughs> and it's every single one, it's the same time. It'll be a message <laughs> on Slack, and it's in all caps. Yeah. And all it says is, what if... <laughs> And then there's a long pause yeah, yeah. while he's typing for like 10 minutes, <laughs> leaving the suspense, <laughs> and, then, and then we get whatever the idea is. Yeah, has to put the, my thoughts when it's yeah. fresh, right? <laughs> but yeah, for the Brawlies, I think like the core concept I'm really proud of, and I think it's such a nice event and very unique. The, the core idea was like to reward the community just for them being themselves. It's like they, the, um, the first one, I think it was the coolest because it, there was like a surprise effect. It's like someone posts like something silly on Twitter and then they get an Oscar for that. Like it's such a <laughs> wild concept, right? And I really like that. But the, and then I, uh, the, the, the creative process was like super um, demanding because like the Oscars nowadays are kind of boring, right? Nobody watched wow. it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood goes after Danny. No. <laughs> but um, it is like, it, it, especially for our audience, like, so like no uh, teenager or like young adult watch the the Oscars anymore, I would say. But then I wanted to make like, how can I make it the same vibes but something fresh and like something very unique? And then I was adding like a lot of layers on top of that. So like uh, it has to be fast paced and then has like needs to have a countdown. So like every time the countdown uh, ends, like it changes everything. So like you have the people watching the whole thing. It's like it, maybe it was too complex. And then the second one, I was super proud because like we kind of, we eliminated the complexity of the first one, which is like a very simple story. Uh, it's easy to follow. We highlight the the winners a lot more, but it's still, it is a lot of work. And like those guys behind the cameras also can, <laughs> can then know because a lot of the work is on them. But um, yeah, I felt like, uh, I, I talked to Ryan already. I think the first bra Brawlies, I felt almost like a glimpse of burnout <laughs> because I, I, 
I was coming to work and then I don't I didn't have the passion to give feedback to the team anymore. Like if I see something I don't agree, I was like, whatever, I'm focusing, like I don't have time to argue, I just need to get these things done. And then like it was a really nice thing to like maybe like should I just maybe don't do don't go crazy on working, right? Even though I was passionate about the project, I was it, it was a really I don't know, what is it, call out sign or mm. uh, nice flag to race but yeah you were also just busy you were yeah. non-stop for the whole i don't know three months before yeah, yeah. the brawlies came out super yeah. super busy yeah and that was on top of everything i was doing right so it's brought yeah. talk the, there was the world finals and then the brawlies which is like to 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 have an idea and then explaining why we we probably don't won't, won't have a brawlies this year we had the script done in august <laughs> so the script was done in august and everything is just production right between that but yeah, and also because you want to highlight uh, players throughout the year, like you, you need to do, you need to wait almost until the end to find the the winner. Yeah, because yeah. you mm. otherwise, if you do it right. too soon, if you do it in August, then when you have the actual time to do it, then the winners are not ready because uh, there are still peop- like things uh, uh, to come yeah. during the year. So, so it needs kind of it needs to be a bit like last minute thing, especially yeah. to pick the winners and stuff and. Yeah, it, it was it was a lot. It was it was <laughs> super fun. Yeah. Uh, but the f- especially the first one, it was it was a lot. It w- but uh, yeah, many good memories. Well, I will say that mm. even though, oh sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, no, go no, ahead. No. Uh, I will say that even though the people at home can't see him, I can see the crew behind there, mm. and you guys did an absolutely phenomenal <laughs> job with yeah. the production of yeah. the Brawlies. <laughs> like, yes, yes, give them a round of applause. <laughs> There, it was it was so well done. It was so well done. Yeah, the crew set up that sound just for them. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? No, I think I I was mostly done. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, how was the uh, second brawl is for you or? Uh, well, the second one was was a lot easier because we were more a lot more st- structured. Yeah. I think I think we because for I guess for the first brawl is. Um, the idea was kind of there already, but for the second we we could work yeah. more like together to yeah. like actually build a thing, and I think it made it a bit easier as well. And of course, having the experience from the previous one and trying to avoid the things we didn't like or that that were, were like maybe not necessary, it was it was yeah. yeah good. So like of course like I I, I love the event and everything, but like we also like as like business think like. Does it worth all the effort we put in for this one video, which like a, a player will see and say, like, is this a brawl talk? Like, <laughs> 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 most of the yeah. people they they like it, but uh, yeah. it is yeah maybe it doesn't worth the the investment of our times and everything. But maybe we do some like we want to do something cool for yeah. New Year's, but it won't be like as big as the brawl is. Uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> keep forgetting I am the asking the questions uh, from Michael. Um, is there a feature that hasn't been added to Brawl Stars that you would like to see? Maybe you too. I, I, there is something I would like. So um, I would like to have more ways of uh, using my the brawlers I like. So I would mm. like, for example, I don't know, like a some kind of like story mode or like some mm. some kind of like real like must mastery. I know we have masteries, but no, yeah, yeah, not yeah. that kind of mastery, but like some kind of quest or like go. Yeah use this brawler in these ways to get things maybe or or even to learn more about that brawler and how how to use it because um yeah i i I usually play with the same characters like all the time because i i like like a set of like 20 characters and and i i would like to find like new ways of playing these car these characters how about you, Ryan? Do you have a like? I, I was so excited about Map Maker, Map Maker when we first started developing it. I was hoping that we would be able to give it enough features where players could develop their own game yeah. modes, like really create a new game inside of Brawl. And I think it still has that potential. So I'd love to see more investment there. And glad the team are thinking about it. Lex, Map Maker. I mean, I. Do- <laughs> Ryan took the words out of my mouth. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Absolutely. And the other thing that I was going to say is, wh- when are we going to get a 5v5 mode? But wait, <laughs> we are. So, uh, you know, there's that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Second I, I also think that it might be cool, like, if the map maker does get fledged out, you know, to its potential, to see, like, um, and this might be a, another source of, like, some monetization for you guys as well, but, like, get different, like, theme, like, 
building, you know, block packs that you could be, get, you know, yeah. different textures for the, the cool. block. So you could have, you know, a winter, you know, bl- block yeah. set or whatever. And you mm-hmm. guys could even sell those in little packs for people who wanted to get crazy with their stuff. I don't know. I think that would I be pretty that. cool. That's pretty cool. Um, from Light. Do you think the community has become more toxic recently or are we too attached to Brawl that sometimes we get carried away? Mm -hmm. I'm genuinely confused if our community is amazing or not. (laughs) 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 Amazing. Uh, Do you have a guy? They're passionate. Yeah. yeah, I don't think the Brawl community is toxic at all. I think it's a a really good and healthy community. Of course, any community has people that are unhappy and some people who take it too far with their unhappiness. But I think overall, it's a really, really good community and a a shining example in the gaming industry for sure. And I think it's lasting long because I remember you saying like to me, like, uh, because like uh, we were in an update and then. I think like to, it was the tiniest update we had. Oh yeah, we yeah, released yeah, like yeah. there is no content. It was like three line skins, mm-hmm. and then the community was like, "Yay, <laughs> the update!" Like, so can we release anything <laughs> that they are happy? And then you you said like, uh, "I think they are still in the honeymoon uh, period," mm-hmm. but I think this honeymoon has been lasting quite years. <laughs> years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think for a long time I was waiting for the other shoe to drop. Where yeah. I, at least in the beginning, I think I thought everyone was so hyped that we were just releasing the yeah. game, <laughs> and that you know whatever updates we put out in the first year, I was like, yeah, they're just still happy that yeah. the game exists. But that honeymoon phase yeah. is still there. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, there's this one comment that I've seen around August, I think, like maybe when we, the team started coming back from uh, from holidays. And uh, we started, I think it was in one of the podcasts that we talked as well about the next update or something. Mm. And I remember seeing this one comment that we, we were talking about how we wanted to make everything go into the game and that it was really hard. We were preparing a lot of stuff. And this comment said, like, just take a longer vacation, rest, <laughs> and yeah. then yeah. come back. Like, t- instead of one month, just take, like, two months of holidays. Like, yeah. go away. Mm-hmm. Like, don't don't worry about it. And I was like reading that and uh, I've never seen any any <laughs> game commenting something like that telling the developers to take holidays and vacations yeah. and to rest yeah it's, it's always it's like no give me give us more stuff <laughs> yeah how about you Lex what do you think no I think that I think that the, the community is not that t- I mean there's there's times obviously people have their moments but uh, overall no I think the community is just extremely passionate and invested yeah. in the game and those emotions sometimes can come out in different ways especially from you know kids that are younger and people that are older process those things in different ways and it manifests itself you know yeah. sometimes is you know anger sometimes is you know constructive sometimes not constructive but overall it's just because they care and that's a good thing yeah, for and sure. YouTube as well. Like, I always get surprised when I see the comments on mm. YouTube. It's like so positive, everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, they whenever I need anything. like a <laughs> kind of a boost, I always go read the comments just to get yeah. it. All. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's different as well. We are talking about like community, but like if you read Reddit or read Twitter, yeah. it's different from like YouTube. Actually, the um, what is it? Was what was the last update we had? It was the hypercharges before hypercharges. Yeah, hypercharges. Yeah. Like Twitter and Reddit, like they were on fire. Like this is too expensive. It's too OP. Pay to win. Blah blah. blah. And then on on YouTube, it's like, yeah, let's go. It's hype. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a completely different <laughs> audience. It's amazing. Um, Sonico. Uh, some community concepts, brawlers, kings. Ah, is there some con- community concepts that you have used as reference and or included in the game? So yeah, so like actually, we uh, we actually have bought some concepts from players. So like uh, some skins that we have in game right now, we actually bought the concept from the player. But then we don't like to make a big deal out of it because uh, oh no, no, now I am, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I don't because then maybe they will. I don't know. They will try to like sell it or uh, it will it will make the it will change the um, how they do fan art, which is like now comes out of a passion, yeah. right? There's a different I don't want yeah. I don't want players to be in a position that they want to do something to sell. And I think um, we I s- we saw some. Uh, it it wasn't like a, a, a artist that I bought an art, but there was an artist that they were trying to like using the same themes we are having and I'm trying to hit like what mm. we are going to do yeah. in the future. It's so, like we have to buy. It's so, like it feels a bit bad, but mm. uh, yeah, we have like bought some 
things, but we do like in the background. Of course, like we talk to the creator. It's not that <laughs> <laughs> we fight. <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, how does uh, from Moon Chess? How does does ever that goes up to the world finals? How does ever that goes up to the world finals work? What is this question? I think it was in it about the location of everything. The ah, yeah, yeah. everything. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think it's about the location. But there is like how how do you guys pick the location? Mm. As an American citizen, I would love to eventually see the brawl finals in the USA. So how do we pick the yes. location? <laughs> yes. Yeah, like Listen, always has to you, go to Europe. All you guys is right there. When this 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 one, it's in Sweden. That's like a forty five minute flight for you guys. No problem. Me, I'm going to be traveling for sixteen hours that day. Bring it to the U.S. Yeah, I think you've landed on the reason why it's in Sweden. <laughs> yeah. no, I know, no. but I know, but truthfully, we we look for great partners in the esports and competitive play space that we can work with. So. Uh, uh, the vast majority of everything that we're doing in competitive play in esports, we are supported by our partners, mm. and many of them happen to be in Europe. And part of the reason for that is not just a, a quick flight to Sweden, but also throughout the whole year when we're doing all of the competitive play, doing events, doing uh, the, the full competitive season, it's very hard to work with a partner that's in an entirely different time zone because then we only get a, basically a couple sure. working hours overlap, if that. So that gets very hard. Yeah, and of course, like in Korea, we've gone there because like Bro was exploring in Korea, right? So you yeah. wanted to like. Uh, and at the time, we had an office, uh, or I mean, we still have an office in yeah. Seoul. So we had yeah. people there in Seoul in our Seoul office could, who could help support yeah. that. And then, of course, like the Paris Disneyland was like uh, it, it was your dream, it's right? My dream. <laughs> like it's a Star Park <laughs> theme park. Yeah, that's a perfect fit. So, the but yeah, I think there is not like a specific reason we go like it depends on the situation or like partners or everything mm -hmm. yeah and yeah maybe king will uh talk about the future world finals eventually maybe another podcast yeah but wow. then yeah this one is in sweden uh dream hack lex will be there so you will, will be, be there i'll be there <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> you too I'll are you gonna be there i won't be oh, there right, i won't be there so no, there won't be anyone to take a picture of me and the yeah. The fan. <laughs> You'll have to find your own <laughs> photographer now. I've got a camera. I've got a camera. <laughs> All right. Um, Hamad, while while making the update now, well, while making the update, how do you guys estimate how the community is gonna react to it? Hmm. hmm. I guess it's a lot of that sixth sense. Yeah. As well, and yeah. you know, being a player and uh, just kind of knowing more or less what uh, what you would like as a player like yeah. we part of our job is putting ourselves in the the position of the player and trying to trusting that that first reaction as well whenever we hear about the design and like we see the details and we we try to trust our feelings as well and yeah how like how the player would also react to it yeah and i was actually like uh talking to a a psychologist like not because of that but it's a friend of mine who He's a psychologist. Was it about Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> and then I was talking about um, how much of like uh, psychology there is in, in this work, right? Because you have to not only like put yourself in their shoes, but understand how people react to stuff. Like for example, the brow pass communication. Mm -hmm. We know there is a day of emotion. It's like yeah. that's something that nobody tells you in the community manager role, right? Mm -hmm. And there is many of those situations. Like someone is angry. How do you? tackle that or like how do you communicate like what are the like sensitive topics how you go around and then there's a lot of uh, things we have to think about when we're communicating and then this gives like this um, background for us to like envision how the things we are creating will be perceived by the players yeah. and yeah. a lot of looking at other games mm. and how yeah, other yeah, things yeah. have happened in the yeah, past. Like exactly. That's true. Yeah. And even our games, in, that's yeah. super so. yeah. We're always kind of paying attention to what's happening in the industry and like mm. learning from mistakes from other places or like mm. good things as well. Like it's uh, a mix of experience and kind of this uh, instinct. Yeah. And then the lurk. Actually, <laughs> back to the question. We actually share some stuff with the content creators beforehand so like in the sneak oh, yeah, peek true. period mm -hmm. we also like have a glimpse of what will be yeah. uh but and most of the times are pretty accurate 
and most of the times they it's like like let's see how it goes and then if it's bad we change but um from dandy lurk actually dandy is like the what is it the player who listened bad randoms f- the most times on spotify Whoa. <laughs> oh, shout wow. out yeah um since the topic is community this time do you have plans for another brawly ah well uh, or something similar for to this year mm. so the question i guess is no like i know marcio wants to do one but uh sorry could, could you get a brawly a brawly yeah mm. but yeah, uh, yeah i really want it but we don't have time like yeah, even if you want there well, is now n- you definitely don't have yeah. time yeah <laughs> uh and do you have any comments on the theorist community which is himself <laughs> who being who's been working for years discovering what's going on inside your total, totally normal star park. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the theories are incredible. Like yeah. the, what they can create out of like this minuscule thing, right? So before they only had the radio, which is like people were listening for that radio for 24 hours a day and <laughs> they still managed like to create content. Like every time there's like, <gasps> Now there's a, a water dropping there. Like, is there <laughs> the next update will be with water <laughs> and things like that? And now we have video, which is yeah. improvement. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny seeing like sometimes, like the the animation that is going on the video is kind of like uh, randomly generated. It's yeah. not like planned or anything. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes random <laughs> things happen, and people are like, "Why? Why? 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 Yeah, like yeah. this means something." <laughs> and yeah, sometimes yeah. it's just a bug or something. <laughs> yeah, but it's incredible the work they've been doing. So, actually. Lots of those lore pieces are for this community, right? Because, yeah. you know, they are the most engaged ones and then they create content around it, which makes the other people engaged as well. And I, and I, and I think that's why now there is more stuff related to this yeah. because there is a clear yeah. like, interest and, yeah. and passion about this. So. Yeah, I remember one comment that I saw, I, I, I even mentioned to Paula, uh, someone commented, on, I, I don't know where, but... I just wanted to play like a casual game and now I'm deep in like these conspiracy <laughs> theories. <laughs> <laughs> um, from Rod Rick. Hello everyone, here's my question. Is there any chance that maybe in the future Brawl Stars fanfic writers can be part of the Supercell creator program? I think it would be cool. Thank you for reading my question. Mm, yeah, I think uh, we touched on that already. Like there's so many social medias or like different kinds of creators that yeah. to expand the creator program for that like it'll be s- I know it's so much uh, work that we we have to pick something and focus to improve it right if we expand to everything then we don't uh, serve no one so, and yeah. it's about the, the demand as well like yeah if, if there is like suddenly like many people that like uh, are doing this kind of content then like at some point like it's it makes sense to look at it but like uh, right now, for example, TikTok yeah. got preference because like no. the, there are many TikTokers that they, they do content content for our games on TikTok. So this is also a bit about like how how many people actually are like into this um, the social media or this way of creating uh, uh, fan art. Yeah, and of course, like some of their fanfics actually become part of the lore. For yeah. example, the Piper and Rico relationship came mm. from them. Mm-hmm. I don't remember any other example, but there, there is are quite a few. Yeah, but uh, yeah, like we do uh, incorporate those things as if they were part, but like sometimes it's inspired by the community. Yeah, yeah. maybe it's a thing that maybe we cannot accommodate them in the creator program, yeah. but there are other ways that we can That's accommodate true. them mm-hmm. in the game, in the lore or something. Mm-hmm. That's true. So, Kajus, um, your favorite experience working with pros per se, I guess we've touched on that. What advice would you give to for people that want to do what you do <laughs> right now? Uh, your best piece of advice. Do you guys have something? I, I think and it's, there is something super interesting about the community role uh, and our community team in Supercell is that everyone has a different background. So mm. there is not yeah, really... True. I, yeah. I still haven't... There, there are, of course, courses and like degrees that you can... That, uh, they are specialized in like community and stuff but like i don't think like none of us has has that in their like mm. background or like not as a main thing so it's really interesting how every experience every like thing you do counts for like the thing you can end That's up true. doing so like it's is yeah it's just a matter of like gathering all those things and and just use your experience and like to to kind of like build 
it's your your own like way to to do what you what you wanna do. And this I think applies to everything, not just community, but it's just interesting how in the community team we are so like different and with different backgrounds. Yeah, and I also want to hear from Lex because yeah, I'm sure many people true. have uh, have questions on how how to get into what you're doing. I mean, honestly, the very best thing that you could do if you were wanting to start a career on YouTube is literally just to do it. I mean, yeah. your your first videos are going to suck, and that's okay. Everybody's first time doing anything. You're no good at it, but you learn, right? And so just get out there and make start making content and find something that works for you and continue to get better at that. And then once you finally do reach a point, which may take years, and that's fine too, then uh, maybe you'll start, you know, gaining some traction. But the most important thing is don't overanalyze it. Just get out there and start learning it and start doing it and start getting better at it. Yeah, I think that's the same advice I would give. Like if you are if you want to be a community manager, like look for the open positions of community management in other companies, see what they require and then just do like with, with Internet and a computer, you can basically do everything we kind of do. It's like just do it, as you said. And then there's another thing here from him. Uh, say something motivational. <laughs> <laughs> You're good at that, Lex. Oh, uh, something more. Okay, I'll I'll say something that uh, I always tell mm. my kids, and this to me is the secret to success in life, and that's mm. to show up every day and give it all you got. Like if you show up every day and you give everything that you can to whatever it is you know that's at hand, then your shots at your you know chances of succeeding are going to be drastically higher than just being like, oh, yeah, I'm, someday I'm going to do that thing, you know, or just kind of, you know, yeah, sort of trying. No, show up every day and give it all you got. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, <laughs> the question from another player is like, uh, Evil Magic, he said, who is the person who is always late to work? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that would be me. <laughs> but <No>. at, <laughs> what? Damn it, people! <laughs> but at Supercell, the it, our work time is flexible. Mm. Yeah, that, that sounds like <laughs> something a late person. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I come super thing. early. Sounds but like think, a cop out to me. <laughs> yeah, I said that because based on the time that I think you you all like get into the office, I think I'm I'm the latest. Like, um, yeah, for sure, completely. I I realize that I get to the office kind of late because when I'm walking back to my apartment from the gym, I sometimes see Danny <laughs> walking to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, today today no, some days ago you were going to work and I was like doing. Errands. But you so were still ahead of me. Actually, that day I saw both of you <laughs> in the morning. I saw Danny at like eight thirty when I was heading back to my apartment, and he was already on the way to work. And then I, you know, I went home and I showered and ate. And then you were on the way to work, but you were on a scooter, so you got there. Ah, I got the ten <laughs> minutes ahead of me. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Chris Escalona, is it possible that later on uh, on the team will take more into account the community's ideas to improve the game? For example, that they give feedback more often to improve the balance of the brothers. <laughs> That's for Adrian. I, Adrian always <laughs> get the heat. Right? Um, but yeah, I think like we are already using a lot because, for example, we drop what we believe it's the right move for the game, and then we see like what everybody's talking about, and then many of the points sometimes like it doesn't make m much sense because we thought of this scenario already. But there are things that we haven't. Uh, thought about before and then actually like it's very insightful to read everything and see like a different perspective on everything we do so we, we kind of like already do that um but yeah and then like of course like to improve the game is like a big statement right it's not that if we like let's say if we do a balanced post people will disagree with each other it's like when you say like listen to the players and if the players are not agreeing with something, then it doesn't make sense, right? Because of course, like when you say like the community is saying something, you're thinking of yourself or one player, but it's... I always like to say that if you can make a post on Twitter about changing the game and every single person <laughs> agrees with you, we'll do it. And I mean every person. Wait, <laughs> there, are, there might be things that people will agree on, like... All 100%, <laughs> no detractors. <laughs> But yes, 
my um, idea is to give free gyms to everybody. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Someone, <laughs> <disagree. laughs> someone who's spent a lot of money no, you're on banned gyms. Off of, gonna... You're banned off of Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> um, Estrela Sonica. About the bad runners, what do you have planned for them? Will the, we have new singles? I never lost the never lost the podcast. Hello to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't have more bad randoms. We don't have m m uh, much plans for the bad runners because, like, like if I could, like personally, I would do a whole album. I would yeah. do a, a tour with the band mm -hmm. and everything. But we have to think of like uh, the novelty. Maybe it's not. It's gonna be not gonna be as cool as before. Like if we do something musical related, then it will probably be a different genre, a different band, or things like that. But maybe the that's it for the bad runners, or maybe like a moment that requires the bad runners to return. Never say never. Never say never. I mean, it could be an unplugged or something as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's four of you there. Why not get a barbershop <laughs> quartet going on? Yeah, Paul is the drummer, yeah. and Ryan was the actual. I was, yeah. <laughs> the lead vocal. Yeah. Um, dog missions for Ryan. What was your favorite part of being community manager? I think we touched on that as well. Or, Yeah, I think my favorite part, yeah, like I talked about, is delivering cool updates, sneak peeks, seeing everyone excited and, you know, having that just wave of excitement through the community when we're delivering something new that people really want to see. Like, that's for sure the best. Yeah. Good answer. <laughs> yeah, See? he looks like he was expecting more. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's always, Danny's always a little disappointed. <laughs> a little disappointed. <laughs> ting ting Timo, uh, we will ever announce specific details about new future new features while they are being developed, so we can give feedback before releasing something potentially bad, instead of releasing a flawed feature and waiting several months for a fix. Super glad what you did with the new brawl pass. Yeah. Oh. The Brawl Pass is kind of something like that. Yeah. And then, of course, like we, we did ask for feedback, but the main concept, the core part of that was communicating, right? Mm -hmm. It was just delivering the news. But uh, yeah, maybe we can do something more collaborative. Collo collo collaborative. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> Together. Together. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but it's tricky because like it, it does like add more work. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say is that like if if I'm understanding the yeah. question is why aren't we just fully transparent with everything? Yeah. And I guess I would say that just us talking internally yeah. in uh, our yeah. small team about what we want to make and build is like a full time job. Yeah. So for us to then be able and it changes constantly. Yeah. I mean, hour by hour, minute by minute, the decisions change. So by the time we would post something on social media, the team might have already moved way past it. Yeah, and yeah. now it's completely different. So yeah. the feedback we would get would be irrelevant like yeah. within hours so it I, I guess long way of saying that the development moves so quickly that w we're just not fast enough yeah. to be able to get relevant feedback for the team yeah we do things like for example we do ask like we are reworking power league can you give no. feedback what you do like yeah. what you dislike we just did with the trophy uh changes now uh so like we are not explaining what we're doing but we're just asking like what do you think or what do you like and dislike and, and i think for especially for new games um uh, we also um, have the content creators the, in the program, yeah. and that we we constantly ask for yeah. feedback. And because in the end, this game so they are gonna play the game, and the players are gonna play the game. But of course, we cannot ask everyone, and like we cannot reveal everything to everyone. But yeah. like, I think uh, content creator being a content creator is also a great way to like you know like slowly like getting getting closer to the to the team and yeah. and building a relationship where you can actually give the feedback early and, and comment on features uh, early. So you're saying that if a feature yeah. gets released flawed, it's Lex's fault. 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's exactly Bring it what on. I meant. No, I, I do like that you guys have shared some, I mean, just for so people know, like we don't know everything that's yeah. coming in the update like long before it happens. But there are sometimes bigger features that you guys are planning on implementing. Like, hey, this is kind of what we're thinking you know, and this, these are some of the details. How do you think the community is going to respond to this? Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously we are pretty in touch with the Brawl Stars community and we'll, you know, give our feedback on the general idea as well as how we think people will respond. Uh, and sometimes some things have been changed. Sometimes they're yeah. like, you know, sorry, we're still shipping it this <laughs> way anyway. But that's okay. I mean, it's cool that, you know, you guys yeah. are trust us enough to have that conversation. 
Cool. Now there's a question for you, Lex, actually. Uh, since Lex is there, oh, okay. I want to ask, what was the process behind adding the 1 million sub, uh, subs challenge in the game? Did you guys approach him first or was it the other way around? I would love to know the behind the scenes of that. Uh, yeah, so like I had, a, I had an idea for a video uh, that I thought was a pretty big video that would uh, um, a lot of people would enjoy. And I actually messaged Danny and I actually just asked for like a... I'm like, hey, can you make this custom quest for me where I can deal a million damage with Grow and it just comes to me? Mm. But that wasn't technically possible. Yeah. So we started just brainstorming some other ideas. And actually, I so it was Danny's idea for the the challenging game. Um, I had the idea, but I honestly I was too. I was like, oh, I don't <laughs> want to ask for that. That's that's asking too much. So I'm not going to ask for it. But when he said it, I'm like, oh yes, yes. <laughs> but uh, so, anyways, it was just I, I approached them with the idea of this big video that I thought would be cool, including tons of people, and we just worked together to find some sort of thing that the in game could support the video and vice versa. Yeah, and also like. Uh... Yeah, you pick like the maps, like the maps you created, and I think it was yeah, super fun. There were maps that I had made, yeah, and yeah. I chose the. I, I wanted chaos in it, and it, <laughs> it was, was indeed chaos. chaos. I had a lot of fun UI, with it, yeah. though. <laughs> I thought it was fun. Some yeah. people hated it, some people loved it. That's good. Yeah, and of course, like it caused some drama, like why Lex and not the others. But like Lex yeah. approached me first, like he, and then I think we are open to hear everyone's proposal. And I even talked to the creators, like, hey, if you have a great idea, tell me and nobody <laughs> talks to me <laughs> ever since actually there is one creator that i won't review yet but we are doing something similar to another creator because uh, awesome. he reached yeah he reached a, a big milestone yeah so like if that's one of you guys doing creators or in the future yeah, yeah get a good idea a big idea yeah. flesh it out propose it to him and see if it's something that you can yeah, work yeah. out it's got to be a good idea though <laughs> i think that's important too is is uh the fleshing it out yeah. like if you come and say hey i want to do something cool we don't know. Yeah. But if you yeah. come with like a clear idea yeah. and like, here's what I would need from the game or here's what I need from you yeah. guys. Here's how you can support me. It gets a lot easier for us yeah. to implement. Exactly. Fungary. After Ryan got promoted, he appeared in a lot of bro talks in costumes and other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> other stuff. <laughs> like a raccoon, I guess. Yeah. How did they, chair. Ryan? <laughs> a chair. Yeah. <laughs> how did the idea of this appearance came? And we will see of... Uh, more of them in the future with Paula and Ryan as well. Um, with Ryan and Paula or someone else? Literally every time it's Danny <laughs> and there's no context. He'll message me in the middle of the week and say like, hey, can you come on Thursday and be a chair in Girl Talk? <laughs> That's all the information I have until I walk into the set after I put makeup on and he says, yeah, you're going to be a chair. Here's your line. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the full suite of, I don't know what the brawl talks about. Yeah. I don't know what the update is. I have no idea what's going on. I just show up and he puts me in a raccoon costume and then and then we go from there. Yeah, we, the, that's right. When we, when we planned uh, brawl talks, we, yeah. we kind of like, it was the obvious thing yeah. to, do, to include Ryan <laughs> and just make him do something stupid probably mm -hmm. or something fun. <laughs> So it was always like a like a, a fun element to to have there, yeah. and we always like counted on him, even if he he uh, left. Yeah, and we are grateful that we always <laughs> yeah. accept, and we're good good part yeah, about it. Yeah, we just assume like <laughs> yeah. yeah, and Ryan came. Oh yes, the raccoon is gonna be Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then he says yes. And of course, Paula was a referee between yeah. Yeah. Marzio and Danny here. So I mean, <laughs> obviously, we're gonna hopefully see her in the future as well. Yeah, we can have two chairs. <laughs> 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 but we and then we also think like because i look for the comments like if people get upset because like ah they said goodbye and then they are here now mm. but everybody loves those moments they love the easter eggs so, like i mm -hmm. i never like i literally like and it's easy to find negative comments right i never saw a negative comment about those appearance of mm. the people who left the team yeah so if you're sick of us tell danny and then yeah, yeah. <laughs> then I, I stop. uh jackie hi danny do you like to invite an artist uh an artist to the podcast uh next time like a fun artist, I mean, maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah I want to actually. I, I will. I will propose the idea here. I already told the team. <laughs> maybe they were a bit. Uh, they didn't like so much. But I. I want to bring someone here, who is like challenging us on everything we do. Because mm. like I want to have like the players who disagree with our decisions to like have the the uh, chance to uh, give their opinions, right? 
because now here it's just like ah we are like this close group and then you're talking about things and then they have no chance to to mm. say anything mm. so it would be nice to bring like maybe it could be like a very vocal oh, no, the, I, i'm gonna create a monster <laughs> out there in the community <laughs> but maybe you can pick like someone who is like uh has some um it's not like has some arguments it's not like it's a very yeah. shallow opinion it's like someone yeah. who has mm -hmm. like some things that can challenge us there's lots of questions so i, gu I guess i will answer like three more and then because like <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be here forever. Let's go rapid fire. Yeah, rapid fire. Okay. Mm. We can do a bunch more rapid fire. Let's mm -hmm. see how many we get done. Canal 77. Okay. I'm almost certain that you you really won't answer this. I guess that's why I picked. Here we go. Yeah. But how one. do you feel about the new lore that you have added? How much time did you take it for you to build it? And can you give us a little hint or not for the future of CCTV, please? That's a great one. Why wouldn't yeah. we answer that? I think that, ah, <laughs> damn, they tricked me. <laughs> <laughs> Smart dude. Uh, yeah, like, how do we feel? I think it's super exciting. Like, we love to see the players getting crazy. And I love to see the casuals discovering it, like, on Reddit, saying, like, hey, guys, have you noticed that if you type the camera, you go to <laughs> yeah. this weird website? And it's so cute, right? Yeah, and new players, yeah. because, of course, uh, you know, the players who have been playing Brawl Stars since the beginning they know about Star Park yeah, and yeah. they know but like there are many new players yeah. since then they have no idea about what, what is all this so it's also really cool to see the new reactions and yeah. the hunt is so fun as well yeah like mm -hmm. I, I, I really like the also the part where we're trying to figure out where to put these codes and how to make yeah. it fun for people to find them out and like all these kind of things it's it's one of the, the funniest things about these campaigns from the work side for us yeah it's really yeah. fun and a hint? I don't know. It's going to keep on going. That's the yeah. hint, I guess. <laughs> uh, but there's an end date. Forever and ever <laughs> and ever. <laughs> but there is an end date. But the idea is that at least what we want now is that there will always be like some lore being worked in the background and like uh, releasing like a uh, big story piece eventually. So like we don't want to have like this gap we had with the fr from the Star Park to CCTV. Um, some Korean letters, <laughs> GGG <laughs> pin artist. Would there be a cosplay contest for <laughs> BS community? Wait, would there be a cosplay contest for BS community managers these or next year? Ooh, let's do what? it. <laughs> yeah, like she won. <laughs> <laughs> That's not <laughs> fair. <laughs> She's ready to go. <laughs> I've seen Lex do some good costumes too. I think we're out of our depth. <laughs> I don't, have I done costumes? Yes. Like, you have characters. Yeah, uh, probably characters. Not, yeah, yeah. Or maybe not costumes. Oh. You have characters. You have lots of characters. Characters. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Characters, I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if yes, how it go? If not, then what's the reason? Well, the reason is that Paul is an actual <laughs> cosplayer. That's we'll some just fair. win everything. Also, yeah. I feel like half the Brawl Talks are cosplayers. Yeah, it's true. It's true. That's true. Yeah, they sure. are. Yeah. Maybe the, the, the contest should be with existing costumes that we've ah. used. Ah. So. Yeah, so you pick the winner then. Yeah. <laughs> Sandia, and then there is a watermelon icon. <laughs> it all comes down to the watermelon. Because it's Sandia. Sandia. In, in Spanish. Ah. Watermelon. I, I, is she or he Spanish? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, Sandia is watermelon? Sandia is watermelon. <laughs> wow, what a every day new learning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would like to ask, which was your first impression of the community creations and how is your perception of it now? And what led you to be community managers? Which were your expectations by then? It's like community creations, I guess we all agree, it's amazing. We are always impressed with everything. Mm. Yeah. But I guess like for the community managers, how it, uh, what led it to, what led you to, to be here? I, uh I mean, well, I can start like yeah. I, I've always been a gamer and like really, mm -hmm. really passionate. And I just ever since I was a kid, I knew that I wanted to work in games. I, I don't I didn't know if I wanted to make them or if I wanted to, I don't know, be an artist as well, like uh, any kind of these things. And I think when uh, I found these opportunities that uh, led me more or less in the direction of where I went to now, and it was just stuff like player support or something like that. Even just that, I was already like super excited to be into and then just seeing like uh, oppor more opportunities coming up, like I just never had any doubt. Mm -hmm. And I guess I had like also a little bit of a, a talent for communications or content creation or something like that. 
it just kind of happened but the original thing was just to wanting to be in games and then finding out that this was kind of a, some skills that I had both things matched and yeah magic <laughs> magic <laughs> Yeah, the yeah, passion for games, I think, is is like number one. For me, number two is passion for social media in general. Mm. Like I, I, I just I just love social media, and I and I could spend the hours, and I and I do that like for my like personal stuff and for for work, and I I never get get tired of it. And also video creation, like um, mm. yeah, all all like content creation in general is something I really enjoy as a hobby and as a as a, as a work. So, so yeah, I think those three three things are for me the reasons. I, I, I so how the question was how we got here? Yeah, as community manager, I was. Uh, you guys have all heard this story, but I was uh, uh, in law school in California, and I played Clash of Clans a ton, <laughs> a ton, a ton, to where the point where I was not paying attention <laughs> in law school and just playing Clash of Clans under the desk. And I got invited out here to Helsinki for ClashCon because I played a ton and I was also a moderator of the Clash Clan subreddit at the time. So they invited me out here as a fan. And uh, I was going to law school. My intention was to be uh, an attorney in video games. And I came out to this event and started meeting people and asking them how they got into the industry. And some people at Supercell gave me a business card. I said, what the hell? And I applied. It was the only non-law job I applied for. And... Uh, of course, I flew out to Helsinki. I did my interviews, and on that trip, I learned that I had passed the bar while I was traveling to Helsinki. But once I got out here and I met all the people and saw the company, and I, I immediately knew that I was going to throw away law <laughs> and become a community manager. And so I did. And eight years later, I'm still here, and best decision I ever made. <laughs> and you, Danny? Uh, well, not so exciting. Like I, I was a <laughs> brawl player before, and then I was a community manager in another company. So I kind of like it fit. Then I apply and I passed. <laughs> 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 no beautiful. Easy, easy. <laughs> yeah, I can make it beautiful, but that's the reality. I guess. <laughs> when you were interviewing at Supercell, who was the hardest interview? Um, Frank. Seth. Seth. No. Uh, no. I think maybe yeah. Marika and Anna was the ones that I I, I had. Yeah, they are not uh, on the on camera. Mm. But yeah, because Frank, like we clicked, because like uh, like I didn't know he had saved Brawl back then, <laughs> and then like I I said like oh I love this game I think this is the game that's gonna change the industry and so like I guess like oh <laughs> I guess he also thought so, <laughs> but um. Yeah, and then I had Junpei and, and Ryan in the beginning, and then Drew and another community manager for for Yao. And then the Drew one, I think it was the, I don't want to say the easiest, but it was because they were just talking about games and it was really mm. fun and like super mm. casual. But um, yeah, I think it was like more a vibe check. Mm -hmm. But yeah, mm -hmm. how about you? I think my hardest interview was was probably with the game lead of uh, Boom Beach at the time. He's a Finnish guy, mm. and for those who haven't met Finns, they're very <laughs> excellent poker face, like really like stout, good poker face. And you you know you can't tell what they're thinking really. And I'm American, and we're very like, yeah. hey, how you doing? Blah blah. Anyway, <laughs> at the end of the interview, I I kind of jokingly asked like, how did I do? And his answer with just the most <laughs> poker face ever was just like, you did fine. <laughs> I was like, oh god! <laughs> and finding finish is like, yeah, you done a yeah, good job. Yeah, for a fin, that's pretty good. That's like means you did you did the job you were supposed to do. You did pretty yeah. good. But at the time, I was terrified. How about you, Marcio? Yeah, I think it was uh, Frank. Like he was the most technical, and uh, I think it was also the only person that I had never interacted from the team mm. before because everyone else had spoken yeah. once or two times at least, and I just had no idea what to expect. And he had like very specific questions that I wasn't sure if I was answering them well or not. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, I was just like, I think I entered the interview already a little bit nervous mm -hmm. and like wanting to impress or something. And uh, then he was like always also very poker face. Like he, he wouldn't show like his, uh, his emotions as well. Like uh, if he was liking yeah. the answers or not. So it was all in my imagination. And I was just <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe it didn't go well. <laughs> How about you? Oh, the interviews? Yeah, yeah I, I, I was so nervous. I remember the... It was it was weird because I prepared my interviews in a way that I 
that I started talking and like presenting some stuff that I already mm. like prepared. So I um in many of my interviews at the end, like the people were like, okay, you answered everything we were gonna ask. So it was then just a chat, but I I was so so nervous and and with especially when meeting Frank and Ryan because mm. I knew their faces and mm. and yeah I don't know it just, it was it was exciting but it was intimidating at the same time. Yeah. Um, uh, luckily, my cat came uh, uh, in every <laughs> single interview, Broke so he he was living in the background, and mm -hmm. at some point he came, and it was like a break for me mm -hmm. to like, oof, you know, <laughs> like breathe and and continue, uh, and also of course I had the, my background from the streams because I I I was streaming Brawl Stars before joining Supercell. So, so the the conversation always started around like that, which was my, my passion. So it was like kind of like easier, like starter mm -hmm. as well. But like it was, it was, yeah, I was so, so stressed. <laughs> Professional advice, bring your cat. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> to interview. Or a Bonus dog. points and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, question from Infernal. Inferno. Uh, not like not gonna name them, but the, are you aware of some of more troubling controversies in the community? I guess if you can name them, then I don't know. But uh, I know some weird stuff. To not to say <laughs> other words. Mm. Uh, will there be more s social features? It's the same person. Like <laughs> there's <this> completely <laughs> bizarre question, and then there's something <laughs> else. Will there be more social features and interact integrations like the Twitch campaign in the game? It's like uh, that was Paula's and Marcio's um, doing. But I think, like for sure, we want to do more Twitch mm. yeah. drops. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I I would definitely like, and I I'm always pushing for these things <laughs> because I I yeah. I see a big potential on using like uh, these other platforms and the 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 stuff that they have already for the games, and and of course it takes some like work and some implementation on our side, so it's not as easy as maybe it looks from our side. So yeah. it's not just like going to Twitch and say, hey, can we use yeah. your your technology yeah. to do this? Yeah. Like it requires work and and no work from me. That's the worst part that is not me just like dedicating hours to make it happen only is also developers that they are you know working on the game and doing stuff for, for the game so it's, it's always hard to find like the balance and like and kind of like convince people to to actually like prioritize these things but yeah but yeah definitely we'll do we'll do more yeah not only twitch like yeah. if there is a feature on tiktok for example or youtube yeah. then we, uh, we for sure like we would use whatever it helps yeah. to make the game grow and mm -hmm. the community engaged. Yeah. Uh, and then another question from him. Is taking negative or neutral feedbacks as a CM a hard pill to swallow personally? No, think it's not at all. Yeah. At least not for me. Yeah. Mm. As long as it's healthy and not yeah. like in, in a in a personal way, then I'm I'm never unhappy with, with Yeah, yeah. Anything. Negative yeah. feedback is completely fine. I think of course like sometimes people go beyond the negative mm -hmm. feedback and starts getting personal and then I think it's like impossible not to be affected by like if you mm. start reading too much, it starts yeah. dragging yeah. you yeah. down, right? I think the same goes for legs, right? I think mm -hmm. if there's negative comments around, yeah. You know, like I mean, obviously, I, I, I've seen studies before that says that you know a negative comment is like twelve times more mm. impactful than a positive comment, yep. uh, which is unfortunate because those are the ones that stick in your brain. <laughs> yeah. But um, as long as somebody's like giving you some criticism that's that's fair yeah, yeah. and you know it's on you to internalize that and you know make do what you will with that but if it's just somebody just spewing nonsense and even if there is yeah. a point behind it you can't get past it yeah. because it's just all you know anger and whatever then that's a little bit harder to swallow because it's easier just to disregard that because they can't get a point across without you yeah. know becoming too emotional but criticism is good yeah. And it helps everybody grow, but yeah, I will also say, on how you do it. like if you have uh, like some kind of problem with the game or something that you want to get better, when we see comments that are like "this game sucks," "I hate you," we just blow past those yeah. and barely read mm -hmm. them. But if I see a comment that's like "hey," Here are the things I didn't like. Here's what I wish you guys would have done. I will read the heck yeah. out of that and forward it to the team and yeah. think mm -hmm. about it and like really internalize it. So like, if you want to give us some critical feedback or something you'd like to see, g give it that extra step in your brain to think, how would I make this better? And we will absolutely read those and mm -hmm. bring them, full, just copy paste them to the game teams. Yeah. And mostly like if you're feeling angry and then want to comment, like just chill and don't. 
<laughs> and then the next day, then you can drop your comment and it, I'm sure it will be a lot better. Um, Syed, okay, there's still a lot of questions. Three and then that's it, yeah. Uh, Saed, what do you think the reasons that made the latest Brawl Talks to get uh, lower views, uh, even though the community and the updates are bigger than ever? It's because I'm not on them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew Ryan was going to yeah. say that. I was for Ryan to be like, because <laughs> I wasn't there. It was the moment he <laughs> left. Yeah. No, no, no. But like, I don't know, like, as I was saying before, we had a Brawl Talk with 1 million users watching at the same time. Those are crazy numbers. Those are numbers that you don't see in any other game uh, company, right? And, like, to keep that is insanity. Like, we, we can't, uh, like, another video that had 1 million people watching was when they released a rocket to the, to, um, with the moon? I don't know. It was one of the rockets that they released. <laughs> so, like, it's, it's something insanely crazy. Like, it's one... Um, moment like a lifetime uh lifetime changing moment for you it's like we having the same numbers as this event it's like insanely crazy and now we have like what a six million views per update video it's like tell me how many other games in the industry have these number of videos const uh like constantly in every update like not even like i don't want to name names but <laughs> 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 but it, yeah tell me like you can maybe find one or two but it's super hard. And then it's it's normal for a game. It's like we release, there is a peak, maybe like it grows, and then the trend is to go down. But like what we're trying to do with like with all the changes we are doing is to make it grow or like at least grow in a healthy way. But like we, we might never see those numbers again, unfortunately. <laughs> but like 6 million views for update video is crazily good. Mm. And there are ups and downs. Like yeah. sometimes... We might make a few updates that are more uh, more popular and that yeah. creates kind of a momentum that then the views uh, go up back up again. Then maybe the next ones are like smaller updates yeah. that creates another momentum to go a little bit down. Yeah. Like it's and one I or two doesn't doesn't define anything. Yeah, I, I see Lex lot nodding and he knows some videos go crazy, some videos don't. You never know. Yeah, yeah, no, it definitely. Uh, what YouTube does with the algorithm sometimes is, is, is a complete mystery. But even <laughs> beyond that, like Clash Royale and Clash of Clans, you can take a look at those. I mean, there's life cycles, right? And they, they go, there's ups and downs and there's ebbs and flows. Sure, you may not hit that initial crazy hype that it was at the very beginning, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be there to still be really successful and really good for everybody involved, you know, regardless of whether YouTube decides to, you know, share your video to everybody on their platform. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's normal and it's okay and we in a, we are in a good place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so two more. Uh, Fueshi, <laughs> how does the Brawl team manage being so open about changes and to the community? Because most of the games keep their mouth shut about problems and upcoming changes that can influence players. I thought you were gonna say something because <laughs> you're just your <laughs> microphone. <laughs> <laughs> because how of do me. You? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think in Brawl Stars. Um, I think I think we are lucky to have Frank as well. Who like yeah. because many of the game leads in in any game won't like they are not that like open or they are they are not even that, that active on Twitter or like on social media. So I think it's it's very powerful in Bro where like there is Frank and then there is a CM so it's Danny and now Marcio, and th there is this like you know like group that they are um, they're willing to spend time on social media like reading the comments and. Um, explaining uh the things and, and just yeah taking the time to do that is is really it's really impressive like not everyone has the time or the energy even to yeah. do that so so yeah it's it depends a lot on the on the people as well yeah shout out to frank because i think yeah. yeah a lot of those things wouldn't be possible because if it wasn't for, for him because like he already came to the game uh, thinking of brow will be like a game that is more inclined to uh, not not fully community driven, but like a bit community driven, right? And I think it's um, yeah, a lot of the things we do. Like I don't know if I present to any other company, like hey, we are having this change that we are changing the brawl pass for uh, free currency to IIP, and then I can I break down the whole feature and I explain what's gonna happen. Like most of the companies want to do that, mm -hmm. right? They will say like no, or um, so we are very lucky. So like you, the community is also lucky to have Frank as a lead. And it's really nice that he supports those mm. things. And it mm. seems to be working well. 
And even back when Frank first joined the team and presented his plan to Supercell on how to get Brawl Stars to global, that was at the core of it, was that it would be community-driven, yeah. community would be first, we would have an open, transparent uh, uh, lines of communication with them the whole way through. So that's part of Brawl's DNA, thanks yeah. to Frank. Shout out. Can I, which, maybe a horn? <laughs> then the last one. Uh, ah, that's not so exciting. It is a good question, but does Ryan give feedback or ideas to Brawl Team sometimes from Ice Frost? Yeah. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't because Danny doesn't allow him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no more. Potato Daddy. No, I am curious for ah, both what Paula ideas? and Ryan. Uh, do you, like, since that you're not, you know, actively on the Brawl Team anymore, do you still, like, follow it pretty closely and still, like... Go over there, their side, and say, "Hey, hey, that thing you did—that's dumb. Stop doing that." <laughs> I, I do that. Are you suggestions, or <laughs> I do, I do that because, uh, of course, I have many friends also in the brawl team, and sometimes I have a yeah. coffee or something in the office, and it's like, by the way, <laughs> when are you gonna release a hypercharge for this character? Because uh, <laughs> those five characters, I don't like any of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> or stuff, or yeah, yeah, feedback, or uh, when I'm playing. Because I, I keep playing Brawl and like sometimes I, I don't like things. Sometimes I really like them. And, and yeah, I, it's super easy for us to just go there and say it, right? So, so why not? Yeah, I, exactly like that. And I think it's kind of cool now because oftentimes I'm going to the Brawl team and I'm more of a player now because I'm not in the conversations. Mm. You know, I don't know why development decisions are made or why things are happening. So when I go and give feedback to the team, I'm also coming from the outside yeah. saying like, hey, what about this? What about that? <laughs> All right, then one more for Paula from Potato Daddy. <laughs> How is Paula after the last bro talk? I guess that he meant uh, to the one you left. Yeah, yeah. well, I recovered. I'm, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm happy. I'm not crying in each corner anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but I, I'm doing well. Um, I'm a bit silent on social media in regards to Busters because there is, I mean, there is many things happening, but no, not really that I can yeah. that I can tell because the things. Like the things with new games that the things are changing constantly. So, so sometimes I think should I be more like open with what's going mm. on? But like it's like mm, like let let's just wait and yeah. like do things properly and then like start sharing when the when the the things we are changing are like make sense because otherwise it's like it's too confusing. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm just super excited and and really looking forward to to be able to share um, more about the new game, but. And of course, missing mm -hmm. brawl. Uh, but we are we're in the same office. Yeah. We we still work together. So good. But thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last question, because I think it's really interesting. Like Colin Brace asked. Uh, previously, you guys said bling and masteries didn't affect the game much, even though people loved the the update. How do you balance community trend and the data? Data is like such a mm. strong word nowadays. But I think. Um, yeah, it's it, like comment, community comments is also data. Yeah. Like yeah. so, like we can follow trends, we can follow sentiment, uh, but we also have to think of like uh, like if you are engaged on a social media of a game, you are already like super engaged. Like you are like a very tiny percent of our players, right? Like how how many of you are like constantly engaging with a uh, McDonald's page or whatever, right? No one, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you see something funny, you just like or whatever, but you're not like constantly every post you are putting like your thoughts there. So like it means that you are highly engaged. So sometimes like what we see as a trend in the show so, um, on our social media is not a trend uh, in the game. It's so, like there's like a lot of people that are like, they also play the same game. It's like we need to also serve those players and maybe differs from what we uh, give to you. So like even though, for example, he, he said about the bling and the mastery update, which is like players love that because it's like it's progression, it's fun, like it's a nice way to get more resources, get cosmetics. But then the numbers didn't do anything. Like we continue like on a downtrend and... Um, so like you, you, you can see like there's a clear example that what we did to the game didn't change the course of our, our growth. As when we released Star Drops, which is like very mixed opinions on mm -hmm. social media, then it like it growed and then it gets it became a steady. It's like 
that like set us the place for like, okay, we now know how can we serve uh, the majority of the community without affecting that much the, the players, because of course we have to uh, get some rewards to put on straw drops, which make uh, progression a bit more random. But, uh, but it's a matter of like looking at trends, comparing everything, if does it make sense? Like does this comment is coming from a, from a, which kind of player perspective or or actually like there are comments that are, are tied to what we're seeing game for example when we remove boxes the the biggest comment we had was like bring boxes back mm -hmm. and then when we brought star drops which is like kind of a the same a similar mechanic um we saw the numbers uh growing even though they still ask for boxes mm -hmm. but um yeah I, I guess it's a matter of like case by case you see the trends you analyze and then you make the call but uh it's not super black and white. It's not like if you're seeing a trend on the community, that means that the, the game needs that or like if it will be an actual improvement to the game. So that's why like if you see the um, some things happening in Brawl is because we want to make the game grow uh, and then serve other people that you are not seeing talking on social media. Should we end on that <laughs> serious yeah. tone or should I get a... So what you're saying is we need a slot machine in the game. Gotcha. <laughs> no, no. Uh, okay, so is Ryan going to come back, come back in, a f in future Brawl Talks from professional bags? You have to, you have to ask Danny on Twitter every day. <laughs> yeah, what do you want? A thousand to be? tweets. <laughs> Ten thousand <laughs> tweets. Watermelon. More importantly, can we get the watermelon? Mm, true. That might be a better decision, actually. <laughs> All right, so I guess that's it. It's been quite a long episode. Thank you so much for everyone here. Thank you, Ryan, Marcio, Paula, and of course, Lex, for helping us with the spicy questions. And it, like your point of view was super insightful because like it's, uh, you were part of the, um, well, you're part of like the brawl uh, build up, right? Mm. Like you're since before, since before me. Original <laughs> brawler. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, where we I appreciate you guys yeah. having me on. Like, uh, the the community is great, and I've said this before. I'll say it again that, you know, everybody there at that table, plus you know all of the community, you guys have all changed me and my family's life indelibly for the better. And I love you all, and I appreciate you guys very very much. Ah, that's love a good way. Yeah, the great way to end. Uh, amazing, yeah, <laughs> amazing. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm.